Join us at halftime. We'll have the halftime blitz and our hidden video plays of the year. We have talked a lot about off the field issues. We again thank John McAvick, Gene Corrigan, and Derek Mays. Now it's time for some football. The bowl season begins. Ron Franklin, Mike Godfrey, and Mike Mayak are standing by as Nevada 9 and 2 takes on 10 0 and 1 Toledo in a rematch of a high scoring game. Enjoy it. We'll see you at halftime. This is fabulous Las Vegas. Toledo. <laughs> Elwood, you know they're undefeated and they got the nation's number two leading rusher? You're talking about Wishon Tate. Yeah. <laughs> Elwood, Elwood, what about Nevada, man? They got the number one offense in the nation. Right, and they also got a record-breaking receiver. <laughs> Go long, Jake. We're from Legends in Concert at the Imperial Palace. And these teams are on a mission from God. <laughs> Las Vegas, Nevada. Tonight, the Las Vegas Bowl number four. As the Rockets of Toledo, one of the three undefeated teams left in the country, number 25 in the nation, take on the Wolfpack of the University of Nevada. Hi, everybody. Rob Franklin, and welcome to Las Vegas, Nevada. Behind me, the city that never sleeps. You're hard-pressed to find a clock in this city, but you're never hard-pressed to find action. And I can promise you for the next three and a half hours, we've got action for you. These two teams played earlier this year. Toledo won that ball game, but some of the numbers that came from the contest, over 1,000 total yards, and they scored 84 points in that first ball game. Mike Godfrey, I have every reason to believe that we could expect not some of the same, but exactly the same in this one tonight. Ron, you're right. The motivation and revenge factor is all Nevada's favor because they lost that first game. And when you have three weeks to prepare for a bowl game, Ron, I expect a lot of changes in the strategy both teams used in that first game. The stars in this one, Alex Van Dyke led the nation in receiving for Nevada. How good is he, Mike? He's an excellent player. Probably the fifth best wide receiver in the country within that group. He made 18 catches in the first game versus Toledo. Toledo has great hands, attacks the football, but you expect that Toledo's going to double team him a little bit tonight, trying to take him out of this ball game as much as they can. Wasson Tate, over 1,900 yards rushing for Toledo this year. Obviously, that's the guy the Wolfpack has to stop. Well, it's a little easier to stop a great running back, I think, than in the passing game because you can't commit the safeties to the run. So I would expect Nevada to put eight, nine people up there to try to help stop Wasson Tate tonight. Las Vegas Bowl number four. We'll be back with the starting lineups and the opening kickoff right after this. I'll be home. Well, movie. What a price. What a saving. Is that nice? Is a deal just made for you? It's movie madness on paper. It's a whole lot of holiday magic at a little bitty price. It's a little princess, and it's only $2.99 on pay-per-view. Want to see a little princess for just $2.99? Pull up a chair, because TCI is bringing it home on pay-per-view. Hello, my name is Kennedy asking you this question. Do you have nine friends? I know I certainly don't, but if I did, I would bundle them all up and head to Aspen for a week on the slopes, one of MTV's ultimate winter vacations. You and nine friends can spend a week there at the sushi restaurants with the stars, Melanie and Antonio. All you have to do to enter is go to the good guys, fill out an entry form, and wait for the call. The good guys, you know what they're all about. It's Aspen for a week, a cool party, and dinner with myself. I'll see you in Colorado. The Las Vegas Bowl is brought to you by Canon. For the very latest in camcorders, see Canon's Eye Control DS5000 by MasterCard. MasterCard, it's more than a credit card, it's smart money. And by Thrifty Car Rental, historically known for low rates. Well, what a marvelous night for football, and unbelievably so, there is no wind on the desert tonight. Always important to us, the third man on the team, the guy down on the sideline, and this evening, it's Mike Mayock. And Mike, how about injuries, particularly for Nevada? 
Well, Ron, it's no secret that defensively for Nevada, they've given up an average of 31 points a game. They had three guys from that unit make all Big West, and unfortunately, two of them are questionable for tonight's game. Their team MVP defensively, Deshaun Miles, had an emergency appendectomy Saturday of Thanksgiving weekend. He's been cleared, but how much he plays tonight is up to Miles. Also, David Miller will play tonight, severely sprained ankle last week of the year, but once again, how much he plays or how often will be up to him. So, Ron and Mike, the bottom line is, A, how much can they play, and B, as you guys know, can they play effectively with these injuries? Ron? Okay, Mike, we look forward to uh, hearing from you tonight as you look at the head coaches, Chris Alt. What a career he has had uh, at Nevada. 163 wins in 19 seasons. And his counterpart across the way, Gary Pinkel. There you see him five seasons and Coach Pinkle 33 wins 19 losses and three ties but the last two years particularly this club has really gotten it going offensively. Shea will kick it off for Nevada. Nevada actually won the toss but deferred to the second hand. Dwayne Harris one of the deep men along with Patton. It's Harris. 25 30 breaks it out at the 40 yard line and finally will be stopped just across midfield and we told you excitement well there it is right there to open the ball game a 49 yard kick return. Ron you thought that Nevada would have the advantage in the kicking game they blocked a punt versus Toledo in the first game and kind of controlled the kicking game but Toledo gets Dwayne Harris right in groove right there off the opening kickoff for good field position for the Toledo offense. So almost a 50 yard return to open the ball game and for Toledo who won the opening ball game 49 to 35 they will scrimmage from the 43 and a half yard line of Nevada. Ryan Hushak at quarterback and of course the man to watch 24 wash on tape. Short drop to throw on first down. Gets it out. Kreitzberg to the far sideline, and he steps out of bounds at around the 35. Let's take a look at the starting lineups for these two teams tonight. Tate gets so much of the publicity, but Huzak can beat you both running and passing. As far as the receivers, you just saw Kreitzberg, but the guy they really depend on is their tight end, Steve Rossi. Led the club in receptions with a total of 41. Good, solid offensive line up front. Kevin Montgomery was a second-team All-Mac. But probably the cornerstone is the man in the middle, 63 Pete Stone. 45 straight starts with this ball game tonight. Second and short, you see Tate for the first time this evening. Turns the corner and he stepped out of bounds, did not pick up the first down. Defensively for Nevada, Paul. Kennedy Yearwood Tenpenny to me is the key David Miller not starting tonight Tenpenny has only five tackles on the year he simply hasn't played he's a sophomore the linebackers Miles is injured it means that Mike Crawford who has the great linebacker mentality has to come up big tonight and in the secondary Guider Overby Johnson and Hassan Hassan with five interceptions on the year and he leads the team in that category. on the part of Mike Crawford the man we were just talking about and Mike I don't think he got the first down no he no, didn't and Ron when you see Toledo line up in the I formation Nevada will cheat those safeties up talked about eight nine people crowding the football trying to get penetration to get in that backfield to stop with Sean Tate the outstanding tailback for Toledo Mike Crawford number 46 middle linebacker unblocked made the play so it's fourth down and Gary Pinkle says we're going for it. Fourth down and just over a yard. The line to make the 32 and a half. Rossi in motion. Tate left side. He's got the first down plus a couple. He made it almost to the 30 yard line as Hall defensively is there to make the hit number 42. Well Sean Tate is an outstanding running back. He broke 16 school records. The players call him the franchise. Gets a good block from fullback Eric Ingle and was able to get through and make that first down. Yeah, Ingle did have an awfully good block. 5'10, 197, a senior out of North Ridgeville, Eric Ingle. 
to see Toledo use the fullback and also an H-back. This time, two tight ends, two wide receivers, only one setback. Tate, counter tray, tries to cut it back into the middle, and a nice job defensively again by Mike Crawford. Two tackles in the early going. Well, you can see the respect that uh, Nevada has for Toledo. Well, Sean Tate is one of only two Division I players to gain 100 yard rushing in every game. Darnell Autry of Northwestern was the other back that did that. 4440 guy who bench presses 320 pounds of strength. Uh, well, Sean Tate has it all and has good hands, Ron. Catch the ball back. So the second down and 10. No score, early going. 13 minutes left to play in his opening quarter. He had a 49 yard kick return to open. Up the middle, this is where Hushak can kill you. 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Toledo. Ryan Hushak. 31 yards. Ron, you made the comment about Ryan Hushak, his ability to run the football. And when you commit to man coverage, and that's what's happening right here, but watch LaShawn Tate, number 24, because he picks up a block downfield. There he is. There's a good block. That really springs the quarterback for the touchdown. And we all know that if they haven't done this game before, there's going to be a lot of points scored here tonight. Mike, the only thing that concerns me is Spring lines up to kick the extra point. If they fire that cannon after every touchdown we're going to have tonight, we're going to have some deaf people up here at this press We're going to need a hearing aid. Spring up and good with the extra point. So let's take a break. 12.46 left in the opening quarter. Toledo, 7-0. Get the honors. Maybe you'll realize it when you tee off against a background of shining resorts. Good job. Or when you see dolphins in the desert, it could only happen here. Maybe you'll know it when the afternoon sun from high in an azure sky soaks relaxation into every pore of your body. This is the place. You'll know because your state of mind will tell you. Yeah. You're in a place unlike any other. It's as old as the wheel. Man seeks rental cars that are not only nice, but of course nearby. That's why Thrifty made them so handy. With car rentals right at the airport or right in the neighborhood. Look for the Thrifty location nearest you. And don't forget to use your Montgomery Ward credit card at Montgomery Ward Car Rental at all Thrifty locations. Your neighborhood Thrifty Car Rental, historically known for low rates. Last minute changes. Put in the new figures. Insert new dividers. Put on new covers. Make a thousand sets. Make a thousand more. The answer? It's simple. Canon has the system that is the solution. The corporate line of high volume copiers. Canon. Now you can. Las Vegas Bowl is presented by Las Vegas. It's non-stop action around the clock, and we're open 24 hours. And in part by Ice Brewed Ice House. Ice brewed so there's never any watered down taste. Seven to nothing. Toledo has bolted on top, aided by a 49-yard kick return. As you get a good look at Ryan Hujak, 31 yards on the touchdown scamper. Seven rushing touchdowns during the regular season. Add this one tonight for the total of eight. This one's going to be picked up by Wilson. He loses the ball. It goes back into the end zone, and that is a touchback. Six plays, 42 yards, 214 off the clock, and Hujak, 31 yards on the run for the touchdown. And Ron, you mentioned it. The big play was Dwayne Harris's kickoff return. When you start a game and get that ball on the other side of the 50-yard line, it's great confidence for your offense. Seven, Mike, Maxwell, the third quarterback for the University of Nevada. 367 yards rushing. You see his passing yardage of 1880. And hang on, here it comes. Mike Maxwell goes under center for, I'm sure, the first of how many passes tonight? 60 or 65, Mike? I would say in that vicinity. Right over the middle, that's Cornell West as they try to throw the quick slip screen. 
And they have it complete, and here are the starters. We talked about Maxwell. Miners is running back, but Maxwell, he wants to make amends for two interceptions he threw the first time they played Toledo this year. This is a fine group of wide receivers. Alex Van Dyke led the nation in wide receivers this year in total receptions with 129. And the offensive line up front, Bob Cooper, probably the glue, number 63. They're at strong guard. Miner in the backfield, going to be hit down for a loss at the 17-yard line. And Jamie Johnson comes over to make the tackle. So the starters, Berkey, Richards, Jones, and Steve Haynes at that defensive end spot leads the team in sacks with a total of seven. The linebackers, well, Wilson scored a touchdown the last time they played. Also Park Hill, Johnson, and Craig Dews, six interceptions on the year. In the secondary, Clarence Love, the best cover guy, Belt and Heron joining him in that secondary. Third and 12, deep over the middle, got a man wide open. Steve McHenry is tied in, and the ball, which is simply overthrown. Ron, not a good series for Nevada to open the ball game, but there's some things there for them. And I think when you look at this ball game, when we get back as this game progresses through the evening, as you're going to see Mike Maxwell throw the ball down the middle against two deep coverage, just over the extended arms of Steve McHenry. But I think the key for Nevada is they've got to get something going in the running game uh, because they've got to take a little pressure off. They don't want Mike Maxwell will always be third and long so the running game with Ken Miner will be big tonight. Jason McLean you see his numbers 38 9 his longest 56 back to punt and they've got the pressure on but the left footer booms this one. On the 41 Mace Freeman and he will be tackled after a six yard return that was 41 yards on the kick. Great field positions again for Toledo. So Toledo took the opening kickoff and they moved it right down the field. Now the last time these two clubs played, it in fact was Nevada who scored first and McHenry who they just threw the long pass to was the man who scored. Then Toledo came right back. They scored three unanswered and that's kind of the way the ball game went. They faked the run and going to go on top. Wanted to go deep over the middle to Rossi. He's not open and Hujak will scramble it for a gain of three to the 50 yard line. Ron, the, the whole key for Toledo offensively is to take some pressure off with Sean Tate. Play action on first down. Ryan Huzak trying to run the football from the quarterback position. And once you loosen up that defense a little bit, then with Sean Tate will hit you. But a good play action back. Fake two with Sean Tate. Trying to go for the bomb. There really, really wasn't a short receiver out there. James Canada, number 97, making the tackle. Now there's an injured player down, and I'm afraid it's Mike Crawford. Uh, the middle backer who has started off so strong in this ball game, and uh, he is the man who's down for Nevada at the 47 yard line. So let's take a timeout. 11 08 left in this opening quarter. Toledo 7 0. Four action filled days, four entertaining nights, four dining, four rooms. For excitement, dial 1 800 4 Laughlin. 1 800 4 Laughlin for free information on a value packed summer getaway to the Colorado River and Laughlin, Nevada. 1 800 452 8445. For the fun of it, for Laughlin. Wishes you and yours a very happy holiday season. Legendary, classic, precise, Sampras, Movado. The art of performance. When you go up to Seattle, you find out that Magnolia Ace Hardware makes new ideas a family affair. And your local ace will give you plenty of ideas on how to save throughout the holidays. It's true, Ace is a place with the helpful hardware folks. 
That's just Mike Crawford walking on the side. On Mike will show you the injury. Actually, his own man hurt him on the play. Watch David Miller, 96, come into the pile and watch his knee. He gets hit and see his left knee, left leg is caught underneath him, and it caused that thing to flex in a position that it's not accustomed to going. So Crawford is on the sideline. We'll keep an eye on him. Miles has come into the ball game. We discussed the fact that because of an appendectomy that he might not play tonight, but he's been pressed into service. On second down, Pujak back to throw. Finally gets it away and just gets it out of harm's way. Deshaun Miles is the man who was pressuring him. Deshaun Miles is a player on defense Nevada badly needs tonight. He's been hurt. He's their best defensive player. He practiced only the last two days. You're going to see the, the good pressure by Deshaun Miles, number 30, and then good pressure again from Lamont Porter, number 49. And you could see why Miles is an all conference performer. That burst of speed, and he was all over Huzak. Ron Steve Rossi, the tight end, is a receiver that Ryan Huzak likes to go to on third down. Number 82. Third down and seven. Near sideline. Got it complete. Springs will have the first down, plus about 10. It's 17 yards in the pass play. And able to have it first and 10 at the 33 as Guider made the tackle. Boy, good cushion on the outside by Guider, number nine, James Spriggs. You're going to see the shotgun, which gives Ryan Husak a little bit more time to find his receivers. There's the open receiver, James Spriggs, on the out route in front of Mike Guider. Toledo keeps moving the football and keeping the Nevada offense on the sidelines. Toledo leads this ball game seven to nothing. We're about to go under 10 minutes to play opening quarter. This time, a shotgun formation. Hujak steps up deep over the middle. Got Spriggs again inside the 20-yard line, being game tackled. But that will be another Toledo first down. And how about a reversal in, in forms tonight with Toledo throwing the ball? Well, I think this is a good plan by Gary Pinko, the head coach at Toledo, because all this is going to do is open with Sean Tate, the running back, because they're going to loosen up this Nevada defense with the passing game. And when you look at Ryan Huzak, the quarterback, he's thrown 15 touchdown passes this year, only five interceptions. Pretty good ratio. Yep, it really is. Mike Crawford back into the ball game, number 46. Ingle also has come in at fullback. He's number 34. Pujak for the far sideline, and that's who he was throwing for, Ingle. The pass was overthrown, and Ingle uh, missed the ball, but he didn't miss the cheerleaders over there who <laughs> took a couple out of the play. Well, Eric Ingo calls himself a forgotten man. He says, I'm nothing but a glorified offensive guard. Every now and then they'll throw the football to him, but he will carry the football tonight. Again, another plan to try to take pressure off LaShawn Tate with quick hitting plays out of the fullback position. Yep, they did throw to him at some critical times during well, the year, and uh, he came up with, with some very big plays for them. Situation, second down, the line of scrimmage, the 18-yard line of Nevada. Again, a shotgun formation. Pressure from the outside, and he will be sacked. That's as many times as Nevada got to him the entire game last time, but Mike Crawford, number 46, gets up limping, but he got to the quarterback. Ron, I'm not so sure that wasn't supposed to be a draw play to number one, Dwayne Harris. You see him go for the football? And it, I think that was a draw play, and they snapped the ball. Pete Stone snapped the ball to the wrong player. Dwayne Harris, number one, was supposed to get that play and run a draw. There did seem to be a little Huzak. bit of surprise on uh, Huzak's face, yeah. So it is third down. The line to make is the eight-yard line of Nevada. It's Kreitzberg in motion. Steps up into the pocket. This time they have a safety man there to keep him from breaking it for a touchdown as he did a moment ago and Miles will make the tackle and that was a good defensive series for Nevada when we talked about Deshaun Miles only practice in two days this week they're not even they weren't even sure he was going to be able to play uh, number 30 being injured but he and Deshaun Miles is the player that makes the play again on Ryan Huzak. Mark Spring, a senior out of Ann Arbor, Michigan, comes on to attempt the field goal. He's 9 of 17 this year. His longest is 42, so this would be a season long for him. Well, he falls down. 
the plant foot never came to grip for him and he's off to the right and no good. Boy I think you could look for the equipment people to be looking for him. You're going to look for equipment guys to be talking to him and him to them. Iran, you're going to need a lot of points in this football game. This game's going to get to 30 or 40 points, and you, you can't hold this Nevada offense. And you're right, just the plant foot, his left foot, Mark Spring just slipped out from under him, is not able to get anything on that football. So Gary Pinkle knows that they missed an opportunity right there as they go with the running play. Kim Miner may be a gain of a couple uh, just short of the 30 yard line. Jason Richards is down at the bottom of that fray. You learn lessons in the first ball game that they play each other. And the lesson that Chris Alt, the head coach, learned from Nevada is that he turned the ball over six times against the Toledo defense and gave him 21 points. So they do not want any turnovers tonight. Just play consistent football and things will work out. Seven to nothing. Toledo leads. 7.50. Left to play opening quarter. Short drop. Going to go on top this time. And knocked away at the last moment at the 46-yard line. Jamal Belt is there to make the defensive play. Outside the lines. Brown out in Cleveland. Friday, 9 o'clock Eastern time. Your host, Bob Lee. Live from Cleveland. The latest on the Cleveland Brown move. The investigation into team moves and the owner's reason behind those moves. Brown out in Cleveland this Friday with Bob Lee. Ron, both tight ends for these teams tonight will be very active. Steve McHenry, number 87, is the outstanding tight end for Nevada. Third down, and they need the 36 and a half yard line. Quick pass caught over the middle, and that's Van Dyke. That's his first of the night. Now, the last time they played, he had a bushel and more. Caught 18, and when you look at the senior receivers around the country, there's Keyshawn Johnson, Marvin Harrison, Bobby Ingram, Eric Moulds, and then there's Alex Van Dyke, just able to come back, make that catch in front of good coverage by Jamal Bell. Add Derek Mays in that group. Uh, that's a pretty good senior receiving group coming out this year. Yep. And as we have mentioned, McHenry at tight end is the guy that they like to go to as well. He caught 59 passes this year. Maxwell reverses the pocket, going to go long, and that's well out of bounds. He wanted Damon Wilkins on the play. But Jason Richards was uh, back there applying pressure, made him throw it too soon. When you talk to pro scouts about, about Mike Maxwell, they talk about his intelligence, his field awareness, and a lot of people think they remind Mike Maxwell reminds him of John Walsh, his BYU quarterback last year. Not a lot of movement, good, accurate thrower. Two for five tonight. Two for five for 11 yards. They'll get there, but right now they seem just a little bit out of sync. Oh, you, might. you can bet they're going to get there. They're, this is a good offensive team that knows how to throw the football. Boy, great block. Pass thrown complete at the 50. And Wilkins will pick up six more yards to the 44. And Mark Heron is the man who made the stop on him. Ron, to be able to throw the football, you got to be able to pick up the blitz. And that's exactly what they're going to do here. Good man coverage. Demon Wilkins, number five, breaking on the out route. But a nice block by Ken Miner, number three, on Craig Dews, number 36. Here's the blitz. 36, Craig Dews. There's the block by Ken Miner. That was able to allow the quarterback, Mike Maxwell, to get the ball away. Yep, he got into his body just enough to throw him off track. This time he'll run the ball. Miner breaks it out. Has five yards. Counted off at six is Craig Dews, the junior from Uniontown, Ohio, is there to make the tackle. And Bob Cooper, 63, with a good block on the play. See, Ron, I still think that's the most important thing for Chris Alt to establish tonight because everybody knows that they can throw the football. But when you throw the football and you're predominantly a passing team, then Ken Miner in the running game, because people are going to play cover two on you and they're going to do some different things. But if you can run the football and get that second dimension going, it's so effective for you. Four wide receivers empty in the backfield. And here comes the blitz right over the middle. Van Dyke, and the ball is intercepted by Heron. He's not going to say he did not hold on to the football. Well, what a break for Nevada here. Mike Maxwell had just what he wanted here. You see the quick drop. He knows he's got the blitz coming on. He's got man coverage with Mark Heron versus Alex Van Dyke. Just threw the ball a little too quickly. 
Well, two interceptions he threw in the first game between these two clubs. And he had to throw it quickly. You know, Maxwell had a broken thumb. He missed the last two games of the year. He says he's okay, but you have to wonder if it's still causing a little bit of effect as far as gripping the football, Mike. Here comes the blitz. Quick screen right into the middle. Cornell West. He can pick him up and lay him down. First down at the 29-yard line. Heron makes the tackle. Well, what Toledo's doing on defense is just keep changing up the looks to Mike Maxwell. And here's a play now where they blitz in a good call by Nevada because they've got Cornell West coming on the quick screen, and now he picks up his blocking with two big tackles and picks up good yardage for the first down. Did you see Cornell put his head down? He's 5'9". He was playing like he was 6'9". Roll the pocket again reverse it out and it's dropped at the six yard line. David Wilkins and it right off his fingertips and that'll stop the clock with 543 left in this opening quarter. You know after the first game Ron Mike Maxwell went up to Gary Pinkle after the game the head coach of Toledo and he says I hope we'll get to see you in 10 weeks because he knew he wanted to compete against them again here he's throwing to Damon Wilkins has him wide open but made a lot of mistakes in that first game wanted another shot at this Toledo defense well they made a mistake on the opening play tonight it was a special teams mistake and it cost them a touchdown now they're trying to get back in it Got him covered, dumps it off to Miner, and he gets drilled by Craig Dews. Oh, what a hit. Always like to have a safety valve in your passing game. Ken Miner, the running back, just kind of filtering out of the backfield. But a good play by Craig Dews, the outside linebacker, who's an outstanding player. He averages seven tackles a game. He's got a 3.9 GPA in civil engineering. So he's not only a good, solid football player, but smart and knows where to be uh, on this defense. Mike, this is the 10th play of the drive. Ernie Wilson has come in at running back. He's number 20. Right over the middle, pass almost intercepted. Alex Van Dyke was the closest Nevada player to it, and Clarence Love is the man who had the cover. Another bad pass by Mike Maxwell. Again, it led Alex Van Dyke uh, to through behind him on this play, had him open. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. Chris Alt goes for this one because he knows he's going to need points. I mean, this is a game where the figure is going to get in the 30s and the 40s in the points, so you need to, to make every possession count. Well, it's fourth down. They need to take the ball to the 19 of the half yard line. Twenty five second clock is down to two down to one. Hold it up. Hold it up. And he didn't get it off. That's going to be delayed against Nevada. I think Mike Maxwell is having a problem right now with the defense. Dead ball foul, delay, offense, five yard penalty, fourth down. Jack Gatto, our referee tonight. Tom Amstutz, the defensive coordinator for Toledo, told me in the meetings yesterday that he's going to show a lot of different looks that they picked up from Nick Saban, who's the former head coach of Toledo, now Michigan State. Different things he used when he was at the Houston Oilers and the Cleveland Browns. So they're going to see a lot of different coverages that maybe they didn't see in the first game. So here we go. Fourth down and 13. Deep over the middle, going for the end zone. Van Dyke is there. Cut it out of bounds. Clarence Love is the man who had to cover on him. And there's a timeout on the field. 4.48 left in this opening quarter. Toledo 7-0. To and they hold on this drive. Let's talk exercise. Time is precious and so is money. So why waste them? One stop into Pasadena Mazda Dodge can put you behind the wheel of the great-looking adventure, the all-new Stratus, and the sporty Neon. Introducing the best-selling minivan in America, the Dodge Caravan. New and improved for 96. With innovations throughout, Dodge has made the best even better. Test drive one today at Pasadena Mazda Dodge, 2000 East Colorado Boulevard in Pasadena. And when you come in, ask for brand. 
Get to Montgomery Ward for $500 million in price cuts. It's all on sale with great gift ideas at our lowest prices ever. Save 50 to 60% on all fine jewelry, like your choice one carat diamond fashion ring for just $2.99. Save 55% on our entire stock of family outerwear and sweaters, like men's and women's sweaters for only $9.99. For great gifts at great prices, don't miss the $500 million price cuts this holiday season at Montgomery Ward. In this world, there are two things you don't do. Stiff a valet and take a top-ranked team lightly. Look out, here come the Jayhawks. Double team and say your prayers. There's no room for pansies on the floor when you get Kansas in your hair. Huh. In other words, na-na-na-na. Na 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 na. Hey, hey, hey. Adios. <laughs> Saturday at ESPN, 6'9", Samaki Walker and 20th ranked Louisville come after number 19, Georgia Tech, and super freshman Stefan Marbury at the GP Go Classic at 7.30. It's one of four games tipped off by Seton Hall at Ohio State at 4. At 9.30, it's California and Minnesota, followed by Oregon, Fresno State at midnight. Well, if you enjoy the hoops, ESPN a great place to be on Saturday. Some of the fans had adventured down here from Toledo and Mike we're at the same hotel they are at the Riviera. Boy, they brought thousands of folks down here, didn't they? Yeah, and they've left lots of little money here, too. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Pinkle on the sideline, his club up seven to nothing. You know, in the first ball game between these two clubs, and I hate to keep referring to that, but there was only one touchdown scored in the opening quarter of that one. It really didn't get going until the second quarter. Bouzak gives to take. He's going to have about three yards in this play. Miles makes the tackle. September the 23rd, Toledo won at 49 to 35. Six turnovers led to 28 Toledo points. Van Dyke with 18 receptions for over 200 yards. Tate, 31 rushes, 176 yards, and two touchdowns. Nevada's done a pretty good job of containing him so far tonight. Swing the pass out. It's tipped at the line of scrimmage. That's Yearwood. And Hujak comes up with the football and brings it back to the 46-yard line. Well, Hujak to Hujak. Uh, that's the reception right there. And then when you look at uh, Ryan Hujak, he came into tonight's game 75 straight passes without an interception. Gets this one deflected. But right back into his hands. Julian Yearwood, number 53, with the tip. Ryan Hushak picks up the ball, picks up the first down. Alertness by the quarterback. He doesn't make mistakes, Ron. He's always in the ball game. As I said, he threw five interceptions, only five interceptions this year, only threw eight interceptions last year. You know, Mike, one of the impressive things about this Toledo club, plus 22 in the turnover margin, that leads the nation. Hujak reverses it, throws for Rossi incomplete. Well, his asset is to running the football. He's a, he's a good quarterback. He's a good passer. But where Ryan Hushak will hurt you most is running the football. Scrambling the quarterback draw, quarterback traps, getting outside in the pocket. He'll hurt the defense in those areas more than throwing the football. Mike Dunbar, the offensive coordinator, calling a very solid game here in the first quarter, trying to open up the running back with Sean Tate by the passing game. Mike David Miller just limped off the field, and Justin Tinpenny came back in to replace him in that defensive front, number 95. Tried to cross him up with the, the quick handoff to the fullback. And let's go down to Mike Mayock on the sideline. Maybe he can shed more light on that. Mike? Hey, Coach Godfrey, in that first series, you made a point about the Nevada safeties cheating up, especially in the I formation. Now, offensive coordinator Mike Dunbar said the same thing after that last series. He said the wide receivers have got to cheat in, make sure on the run game they get a piece of those safeties. Clock running. We're about to go under three and a half minutes to play in this opening quarter. Toledo 7-0. Right now with third down, and they need to take it to the Nevada 44-yard line. Nevada shows blitz, and here they come. Hujak steps up on top. Too far. 
Spriggs is the man that he wanted. They had single coverage, and Spriggs had beaten his man by a couple of steps. Good defense again by Nevada, being able to put some pressure on Ryan Hushak. No place to throw the football. James Spriggs pretty well covered. Ron, Nevada did block a Toledo punt in the first game, so Nevada felt like they'd have an advantage in the kicking game tonight. So far, Toledo has the plus. Good wins for the snap, gets a good one, and he booms this one. No fair catch is called for it. This is Gibbons, fumbles the ball, loose at the six-yard line. <laughs> Gibbons is the man trying to make the recovery. Looked like Nevada had the ball, but there's a lot of pulling at the bottom of that pile. Well, Chris... Chris Alt's heart just started again because he certainly couldn't give up a fumble right here. Juan Givens just trying to, to catch the football too high. Never really found the football, but sharp enough to get it back underneath that pile. You see he's too high catching it like the center fielder. I'll tell you what, he came really close to losing that thing. So they're going to scrimmage deep in their own territory. Ron, I think this is a series now. Chris Alt's had a couple series to look at the Toledo defense. I think you're going to see Cornell West, Damon Wilkins, the other wide receivers catch the football, try to take a little pressure off Alex Van Dyke here early. You know, I think Chris Alt kind of hedged on that yesterday that the important people in this ballgame are the folks other than Van Dyke and Miner, some of the peripheral folks. And there's West right there with the reception to pick up the first down because those other people are being concentrated on and it's what these other people do. Well, when you have four wide receivers, you're spreading the field pretty well and, and you get a lot of too deep. You can get in the corner and the safety double on Alex Van Dyke a lot of times. Cornell West is going to have one on one on the other side. He makes the catch on the sideline, but I, I think it's it's almost like Toledo's plan to throw the play action pass to open up with Sean Tate. OK, now let's throw a wide receiver to the other wide receivers and open up Alex Van Dyke. This time a running back behind Maxwell with three wide outs to the right side and Miner will take it out of the 26 to the 27 Craig Dews defensively. It's a Toledo defense that led the nation in turnover defense 34 takeaways Toledo only had 12 turnovers themselves. They wanted an attack defense. Uh, Gary Pinkle worked under Don James at Washington. They kind of studied Washington's defense Virginia Tech's and came up with this 4 2 defensive front stunts a lot blitzes a lot. So uh, they're acting on defense. Don James is here. In fact he and his wife came down from the Northwest to to watch his uh, former assistant coach uh, in this ball game. Quick screen in the middle. It's Van Dyke. Breaks it open and he may go. 50, 40, 30. Foot race is on and Van Dyke is caught from behind at the two by Clarence Love. 71 yards. Ron, you always tell your defensive backs if you can make the stop. I don't care whether it's at the one inch line, you make the stop. Now Clarence Love with a great effort here. Alex Van Dyke's going to catch the quick screen, quick screen and you never know what's going to happen on that quick screen. You pick up some key blocks. There's a great block by Cooper and Thorpe. Now all of a sudden you got Alex Van Dyke in the secondary, but Clarence Love never stops. He never quits and makes the tackle. Now it's up to the defense to try to hold him out. Eric Bennett, Mike, is coming at quarterback, which they have started doing in short yardage situations. He's a short yardage quarterback, but he can run the football around. He is very solid at running the football. Eric Bennett, quarterback for the Straight ahead with the running play, Ken Miner. And he is down to about the one foot line. Now they say touchdown. What they had to wait for, Mike Godfrey, you saw he fumbled the ball into the end zone. It looked like he fumbled it. Maybe we'll pick it up right after the play here into the end zone. We'll see uh, whether he did or not. Eric Ken Miner, number three, following good blocking to see if he got in the end zone. Mike Rockwood, number 70, with a pretty good tackle. <laughs> Can't tell if he did fumble the football into the end zone or not. 
we're checking to make sure that it was Miner who got the touchdown. If he got the recovery or if Wilson did. Extra point attempt up and he's good. Damon Shea knocks it through. So Miner does get the touchdown. The thrifty car rental bowl week begins Wednesday, December the 27th. Eight big bowl games, one big week. Some outstanding matches include Texas A&M and Michigan on the 28th. Mike and I will be there for the Builder Square Alamo Bowl. How about Virginia against Georgia, December the 30th in the Peach Bowl? Our Penn State and Auburn, New Year's Day in the Outback Bowl down in Tampa. Mike and I will be there as well. Eight games, big ones here on ESPN. Well, just getting in this Christmas season. It's a great time of year, a festive time of year. And of course, the bowl games are coming. What else could you want? <laughs> I know what you'd like. You'd like a, better, a little better luck at the uh, machines, huh? Yeah, a little warmer weather for fishing, too. <laughs> so we now have an official, Elvin Lindblad, our statistician, that just talked to the guys downstairs. It is credited as a rush and minor. He's seeing a two yard run for the touchdown. He did lose it, but he recovered his own fumble. Because Ernie Wilson, you could see number 20 in the replay, also scrambling to get down on the football. Harrison Patton back deep. Flag is down as Nevada was offside on the kickoff. And that kick goes over his head. That's Patton. That ball is alive. Mistake here, Ryan, to come back. They're going to lose this one. Being offside on the kickoff. A special team mistake right here, as Mike Godfrey has just pointed out, is going to break some hearts in the stands. And I, it wasn't even close. That kid was offside by three yards. Another mistake in the kicking game. They gave up the big return on the first kickoff and now offside on this and will negate the fumble recovery. Yeah, I don't think there's any question as to whether Toledo will uh, will take this. This is a split crew tonight between the Big West and the Mid-American. But the guy was on the near sideline, very close to us, and everybody pointed here in the booth that he was about three yards offside when uh, when the kick was made. Yeah, so, there's no argument. It's right in front of the Nevada bench, so there's yeah. not an argument. So, uh, now Dennison Dawson has just come back there, replacing Patton, who <laughs> let the ball go over his head just now. So Nevada would have had that football deep in Toledo territory with momentum in this one. And right now they're kicking off of the 30 yard line. Harris, he fumbles the ball, but picks it up on the first time. Gets three yards and then gets punished. Shota is the man on the play. Wayne Harris, who had the big kickoff return in the, on the opening kickoff, fumbles this one, gets it back, and gets hit by Matt Shoda, a linebacker, on a good tackle. So we're tied at seven, with a minute 41 seconds left to play, opening quarter. Toledo took the opening kickoff. Harris went 49 yards. They went on to score and jump on top seven to nothing. Now Nevada has come back. Nothing on the left. Let's take it to the right. Going to be stopped for no gain. Garnett Overby is there defensively to make the tackle. In fact, he may have lost a half yard. Overby. Ron, the first game that they played, David Miller had made a comment that they would stop with Sean Tate. David Miller being a defensive tackle for Nevada, and that was on the bulletin board for the Toledo offense. But you can see tonight that everybody, especially the secondary, Garnett Overby, number 13, was up quickly to make that play, and was Sean Tate. So everybody is really interested when Rashawn Tate gets his hands on that football. Here comes the blitz from the outside. The pass, Tate in the flat, breaks a tackle at the 20. 
And he's going to take it to the 30, the 31-yard line. Canada defensively. Well, Sean Tate, uh, a lot of people feel like that uh, he's going to be an outstanding back uh, when he gets to be a senior next year. A lot of people compare him to the running style of Barry Sanders. You never really get a quick hit on him, straight ahead hit, and he cut on a dime, which you just seen him do on that screenplay. John Payua, number 99, is the man coming from the left side. As we look at a third down situation, they are one of four on third down conversion. Right up in the middle, has it complete to Brunswick. And that's only going to be a gain of about a yard in the play. No, I beg your pardon. Going to be a gain of five in the play, and he will have the first down. The chain thing had already started to move on the other side. So Toledo holds on. Clock down to 11, now down to 10. That probably was the final play of this opening quarter as Toledo has gotten the first down and the ball at the 35 and a half. One second, and that is it. So that's the end of the first quarter. We're tied at seven. <laughs> See this? It's your ATM card. It's got your name, got your bank's name, but what if it had a MasterCard logo too? Then it'd be a MasterCard Master Money card. An ATM card so useful, it would also work like a check. So you could shop for stuff all over the planet at 12 million places where you see this. And the money comes out of your checking account, so you don't have to carry all that cash. So you see, Master Money is still your ATM card. Only better. Neat trick, huh? You're next. I'm all yours. Save it for the stage, Romeo. Carol always gives it to me straight. Like when she told me about my... I told him about head and shoulders. Regular shampoos just rinse flakes away so they could come back. Head and shoulders helps prevent flakes from even forming. You see the difference? You look great. Thanks, but will it get me this part? Couldn't hurt. Head and shoulders, because great hair can't have flakes. Hey, break a leg. Do you love beer? Have you ever spent 20 minutes in the beer aisle? Have you ever toasted with beer? Do you ever return a case of beer because it tasted old? Did you ever notice how the good beer is the first to disappear from the fridge at parties? Do you think this might possibly be the best time in history for a beer lover to be alive? Do you love beer? Maybe you'll know it when you finally see it. And realize your heart is racing faster than your engine. Almost there. Or the first time you witness something that can't be happening, but is. How'd they do it? Or when you discover that in a city of so many options, sleep is not one of them. This is the place. You'll understand because your eyes will show you. Yeah. And the feeling in your soul will convince you. You're in a place unlike any other. Some of the good folks from Toledo who have come out to follow their football team. Mike, to show you how close these two clubs are, first game that they played, the defense for Toledo scored two touchdowns, and that's what they won by 14 points. So it's like even Steven as far as these offenses are concerned. Oh, I don't think there's any doubt about it. You'll see again Toledo in the eye. Look for the safeties, how close they are in the line of scrimmage. Jack play action wants to go on top and he does down the right side and was it caught yes out of bounds though Kreisberg hoping that that ball would get there a little bit sooner and Brock Kreisberg's an outstanding receiver Ohio State recruited him and when Joy Galloway was thinking about coming out early the great receiver from Ohio State if he came out early they're going to give a scholarship to Brock Kreitzberg, number 84, but Joey Galloway stayed in. Brock Kreitzberg to Toledo. 
Well, you could see that uh, he wound up making the reception, but uh, he was out of bounds. Good idea by Brian Hushak go to go up on top, keep those defensive backs off of Sean Tate. Swing pass, that's Tate in the flat. Has a blocker in front, has five, has ten, and counted off at 15 yards as he'll take it to midfield. And while Sean Tate showing you why he had 1,905 yards rushing this year, and he could do the same thing when he catches. He has quickness and he has strength. Uh, spent a lot of time in the weight room at Toledo this summer trying to get stronger, but you see him slide in there, make those little cuts, gets good blocking out of his offensive lineman, Raymond Torres, number 52. Good slip screen to LaShawn Tate. You just joined us, Nevada 7 and Toledo 7. Tate has rushed the ball seven times for 21 yards, and you see the reason why. Caught from behind is Sean Miles, and he will yank him down by the jersey to a five-yard loss. If that doesn't happen to him very often. No, and the linebackers are reacting quickly to the eye formation. That leads you to believe that the play-action pass is going to be there, but you see number 30, Deshaun Miles, on a blitz from the outside, makes the tackle collar with Sean Tate, so... Now Toledo has to look for a way to get outside of those players with Ryan Hushak maybe faking the ball to Sean Tate, play action pass from the outside. Second down, the line to make is the 40 of Nevada. Wolfpack showing blitz, and here they come. Deep over the middle, did he catch it? Brunswick diving for the ball, and they say yes at the 42-yard line. That's good for 13 yards as Brunswick did a really nice job of getting a hold of that football. Well, he was a wide receiver, Brunswick, who had minor foot surgery this year, played off and on, but they didn't know if he was going to play in this game. It's a big boost to him that he's in the lineup here with a great catch laying out with Sean Tate with an outstanding block and pass protection. I started to say he got Miles that time who got him a minute ago. He horse collared <laughs> him that time. <laughs> and Tate only weighs 175. Third down and two. In the flat, got him wide open and there's Ingle. That's the very play we he talked about. Ingle, they're throwing to him more. And on this play right here, he was almost left unnoticed and it cost Nevada. Well, it, they kind of hide him. It's a play action pass off the sprint draw. And you're going to see Ingle just go right out into the flat after the fake to Tate up inside. And so they lose the fullback, Eric Ingle, because they think he's going to block. He's in the flat now. The outside linebacker, Deshaun Miles, is just a little bit late in coverage because he was waiting on whether was Sean Tate had that football or not. And I think Porter's the one who finally wound up pushing him out of bounds. Who's yet? 9 of 14, 105 yards in this game. Pressure from the outside, looking for the end zone. He's got single coverage, and it's knocked away nicely by Darnell Hassan. Well, late flag, two in the middle, Ron, uh, thrown by the uh, side judge. An eligible receiver downfield. This has been a good game plan by Gary Pinko offensively. Mike Dunbar, the offensive coordinator, trying to go up on top to Vince Wilson, number five. Good recovery by Darnell Hassan. Wilson got the single coverage that he, that he was hoping he would get in the secondary as we get the call. An eligible receiver downfield on the offense. Five yard penalty. Repeat, first down. Well, you really, when you look at that, that was a drop back pass. And, you know, it's unusual for a lineman unless he was just blocking and gaining some momentum and just uh, carried it on down the field. But you don't see that often. That's most unusual. You're right. Shotgun formation. draw. Kuzak right up the middle. Inside the 25 and now inside the 20 as Yearwood is holding on to him and he almost picked up the first down. Dangerous as a runner. The quarterback Ryan Hushak. Raymond Torres number 52 with a nice block. It's a draw play all the way. Both running backs with Sean Tate and Dwayne Harris into the linebackers with blocks. And now you take a long yardage situation. You're back now to second and three. Mike 
you remember as a coach when you've got to defend 11 guys when you get a quarterback that can run that's an extra head. Oh, I like those it? mobile quarterbacks that <laughs> can run they give another dimension to offense. Kuzek already has a touchdown. Tate at the 10 at the 5. Touchdown Toledo. And Engel with the block that opened it up. Well that's the little Barry Sanders that you see. That's the that's the style that Barry Sanders runs on Sunday for the Detroit Lions down the road from Toledo. Shows you that little quickness where he gives you the leg and then takes it away. Hand off to Washon Tate. You see the little cut on the dime there. Now he's working upfield. Now there's the cut to the left. Two cuts to the left. Good block by Mace Freeman, number 29, the outside receiver. Then the effort getting into the end zone. Very impressive run by Washon Tate. A lot of kudos on that play. Also, Steve Rossi, the tight end. You could see 82 blocking downfield to open the way. Spring with the extra point attempt is up and he's good. So let's take a break. 11 57 until halftime. Toledo 14 to 7. Look, maybe it'll happen when you see the lights shimmering on the horizon. Beautiful. Or the first time you enter a world you thought could only exist in a dream, but you're wide awake. Maybe it's when you realize you don't know if it's 2 p.m. or 2 a.m. <laughs> and furthermore, you don't care. This is the place. But when it does happen, you'll know. Yeah. Because your heart, your mind, your senses will tell you. Aren't you glad you came? You're in a place unlike any other. Over the past three years, Dodge has offered a choice of more new nameplates than anybody else. Here are three more new choices, but they aren't cars. They are three choices that make it easier for you to drive a new Dodge. Choose from generous cash incentives or exceptional interest rates or extremely low lease rates. The Dodge Buyer's Choice Sale. Why would you choose to buy any place else? The family of the future will have many hundreds of television channels. Gee, mister, won't that be confusing? Not with this, a video guide. It'll let them see what's on 70 days into the future. Or what's on right now. It'll give them instant news and sports scores. And with just one touch, they'll even be able to tape record their favorite television shows. Don't forget the tape. So what do you think they'd call this video guide? Video guide guide under hundred dollars at Radio Shack and other stores. The Las Vegas Bowl is presented by Las Vegas. It's non-stop action around the clock and we're open 24 hours and in part by the new Dodge. We're thinking ahead. Well, some of the good folks from Nevada who have uh, journeyed over here for this football game. And Mike, this is a tough situation for the students because Bob Cooper was telling me yesterday at uh, lunch, this is exam time for them. It'd be midweek. A lot of kids couldn't get off to get here. Well, they came down from Reno, and uh, Chris Alt loves the city of Reno. But uh, tomorrow's finals day. He's taking his team right as soon as this ball game's over. They're going back to Reno for finals tomorrow morning. And you know they were late getting here. You know why. A truck ran into the wing of their airplane. And they missed the pie eating contest and all that. So Toledo competed against themselves. A different st <laughs> well, well, maybe, I thought maybe they'd put ESPN against Toledo. At late. We didn't have any pie eaters. We've we got some pie eaters up here. But, uh, no, but all the guys in the truck couldn't get there. I know. <laughs> From the 16 yard line, Dawson. And his knee was on the ground. He went down like a shortstop to make sure he got his body in front of it and his knee was on the ground. Like Chico Carascal, right? Yeah. Chicago White Sox That's there. Yeah, right. I didn't realize you would remember that. There's his knee. That was about two when Chico was playing. Uh, Come on, I was Dennis older than that. Dennison Dawson uh, with the Chico Carascal move. Way to go, guys. Good looking shot there of exactly why the official who was on top of the play said uh, you can't advance it. It's dead here at the 17. Love defensively. 
A lot of stemming by Toledo at the line of scrimmage. Their defensive line will line up in a look. Uh, Chicago Bear 46. Now watch him move just before the snap. Trying to confuse again Mike Maxwell, the quarterback, and the offensive line in the pass protection blocking assignments. Mike, that was almost a lateral, and you have to wonder if Nevada might not try to come back with that play. Van Dyke can throw it from you, that situation. You're exactly right. He can throw the football. When you throw that pass, you always have a pass, double pass off of that. Van Dyke now three catches, 92 yards. Got him open. Mike, he's having trouble. That time Maxwell had him open and I don't know if it's the way you're having to grip the football or what but he's not throwing the way Mike Maxwell has thrown all year. Well, he hurt his hand. He was replaced by Eric Bennett at the end of the season. Eric Bennett really is an outstanding young prospect the backup quarterback. Mike Maxwell on the run just gets the ball outside a little bit too far for Cornell West. Just ran out of real estate. Yeah he did. Happened to him a couple of times tonight like he just uh, can't grip it quite the way he wants to. Three wide receivers come to the side of the field. Toledo 14 to 7. Here's the draw play. Minor. And he will be tripped up by Jason Richards at the 29 yard line. So now third down. And the line to make is at the 36 and a half. Well, I tell you, Jason Richards played that very well because you always tell your defensive lineman when you're rushing those passers, make sure when he clears that last back, you know it's a pass. But Jason Richards was well aware that Mike Maxwell when he went back was going to give that ball off on the draw and was able to make that play. Short drop over the middle. McHenry is the man that he wanted. Look at Maxwell. He is running down to the official saying that my receiver was held up. And the official is saying fourth down. He could have been lassoed and he couldn't have caught that one. No, that ball was thrown too far out of him. See the snap. Mike Maxwell going back to throw. He has Steve McHenry on the backside. There's a collision that he's talking about. Ball's thrown out of bounds. He's complaining about that collision with Craig Dews, number 36, the outside linebacker. Lane to kick first time 42 yards. Let's see what the left footer does here. He sends this one to Norbert. Got a little breeze behind him. This is Freeman all the way back to the 18 yard line. Flags all over the place, and Freeman may take this one the distance. Nope, he's going to be caught from behind, but that's going to have to go way back downfield. That'll be back inside the 15-yard line when it's when they stop penalizing this play. Block in the back on Toledo. We had 59 yards in the kick and 53 on the return. So look how long this penalty is going to be. It's going to wind up being about a 68 yard penalty, isn't it? Well, remember the penalty on the bat also. That's the right. Game cost them recovering a fumble. Illegal block in the back by the receiving team during the during the re return. That'll be a 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. So let's take a break. 10:32 left until halftime. Toledo by seven. We'll be right back. Long ago, man began renting cars only at airports, where thrifty car rental was first discovered. But in the future, man would need wheels for reasons that had nothing to do with flying. Thus, the dawn of neighborhood thrifty locations far and wide. Assuring a practical, easy, and affordable way to rent a car, wherever you are and wherever you're going. Your neighborhood thrifty car rental, historically known for low rates. You've got the honors. Maybe you'll realize it when you tee off against a background of shining resorts. Good job. Or when you see dolphins in the desert, it could only happen here. Maybe you'll know it when the afternoon sun from high in an azure sky soaks relaxation into every pore of your body. This is the place you'll know because your state of mind will tell you yeah, you're in a place unlike any other. Let's look at the Magnum Power Sales event one word at a time. Magnum, as in Magnum Engines, as in Dodge Ram, ranked most appealing pickup by J.D. Power & Associates. Power, overall the most powerful line of truck engines on the planet. 
sales. Save on 5.2 and 5.9 liter V8s, up to $670, or $500 on Cummins Diesel. And event, it's the first time America's hottest pickups have ever been on sale like this. At America's Truck Stop, the new Dodge. Valley's Jubilee welcomes you to the Las Vegas Bowl. Okay, 14 to 7 our score. Mike, to make sure we're totally accurate, the ball would have been at the 37-yard line. It is at the 11. So that is a 53-yard difference for Toledo. So both teams with a mistake on special teams that cost them and cost them big time. Ron, I'm really impressed with what Sean Tate. He wanted to go to the University of Michigan to play, but Michigan thought he was a little bit too small. And he chose Toledo over Michigan State and Oklahoma State. Uh, he is impressive as a tailback. Good look at it. 1,905 yards for the second to Davis of Iowa State in total yards this year. Quick handoff inside to Ingle. Has five, has ten, counted off at 16 and 17 yards. And let's go down to the sideline and Mike Mayock. Mike? Hey, Ron, an interesting story with Toledo. Here's a team that goes undefeated. They're number one in rushing in their conference, number one in scoring, two in total offense. Yet when the all-league team came out, there were only three guys on the entire team from Toledo, none from the offensive line. When I spoke to some of their coaches and players, they were plenty upset about it. Nobody even made the second all-big Mac team from this club. They told me, hey, they have a point to prove tonight, and you saw it on that last drive. Mike, they really wore down the Nevada defense in that first game. Yep, they did. Pass got it complete to Vince Wilson right at the 40-yard line, and that's going to be good for another Toledo first down. 12 yards of the play. Ryan Hushak going to roll to the left. Remember, his strength is running the football also. Good out route to Vince Wilson on the outside for the first down in front of Darnell Hassan. So the interesting thing tonight, and we know what a good athlete that Hujak is, but he, they have been very good running the football, but very good passing the football tonight as well. Hujak steps up. Now going to run it. Looks for a block, and there was none there, and that's Canada. James Canada, who rides him down at the 45. Ron, you can be a great quarterback at Toledo, but uh, they had a young man by the name of Chuck Ely, who was a quarterback in the 70s, early 70s, under Frank Lodiver. They went 12-0 in 1970, and they were ranked 12th in the AP poll, but Chuck Ely was 35-0 and as a quarterback. Kind of tough to beat that. <laughs> Mel Triplett, remember the running back from the Giants, Toledo graduate? They've got a rich tradition at Toledo. But Gary Pinkle, the first coach to go undefeated in a season since that time. Since Frank Lauderdale. Toledo leads it 14 to 7. About to go under nine minutes to play until the halftime. Tate wriggles his way, breaks it open, and he is very close to the 40-yard line as James Johnson finally corralled him. Pete Stone with an excellent block on the play, the we, center. We can nickname him Little Barry because uh, he ha does have the running style of Barry Sanders. You see this just hopping around, look at those little moves he's making as he's trying to work down the fit football field. And he has good quickness. And again, we talk about his strength. Uh, he had a job where he worked at 7.30 in the morning in the summertime. He had a class at 4 when he got off work. And then he went to the weight room and worked every night to 7.30. So this is a young man who worked hard to try to become a strong football player. Well, he's attempted nine rushes tonight for 35 yards. Bushak with the shotgun, drills it over the middle complete, down to the 31, and that's Tate as he got him out of the backfield open, and it's a gain of nine. You like to see running backs who can run the football, also catch the football, and in the set that Toledo's in now, the formation, they're going to work with Sean Tate out of the backfield against the weak linebacker, Deshaun Miles. So Miles really has to cover with Sean Tate one-on-one -on, -one on the outside in zone coverage. You know, Mike, Toledo's not only running the football, but the passes they're throwing are safe passes, which are virtually the same. And the point is, they're playing ball control, which keeps that Nevada offense off the field, and, and that is imperative in this ball game. Ron, they don't make mistakes. They don't throw the interceptions. They don't fumble the football. 
play action, gets it away, overthrown. He wanted Rossi on that one, but it was a little too tall because, boy, there was pressure coming from James Canada, big number 97. I was saying that, uh, Ron, when you're a quarterback coach, you have goals for your quarterbacks, and you want to get them, if you're going to throw the ball a bunch, you want to have single-digit interceptions if you're going to throw those interceptions. See Canada with the pressure, number 97, good coverage in the secondary on Steve Rossi, but Ryan Hushak threw eight last year and five this year, and that's pretty remarkable on the quarterback when he's throwing the football as much as they are. Second and ten, the pitch to take. Walker in front and turns it up. He's gone. Ten, five, touchdown. Take from 31 yards. And that was Jim Stites, number 62, who threw the paving block. There was nobody left. They were able to get the tackle in guard outside on the tight end side. Nate Johnson and Jim Stites. And Little Berry was Sean Tate is able to get outside. Nice block by Steve Rossi, the tight end. There's Stites' is block on Guider number nine. And Little Berry Tate is in the end zone for Toledo. Well, you're right, Rossi, with a good seal block to take away the inside. Spring tries to make it 21 to 7 Toledo. He's got it. 7 and 59 left until halftime. Toledo now with a 14 point lead. Okay. Jim Solon from Team Pasadena, Chevrolet Oldsmobile Geo. We're finishing our best sales year ever with a holiday special that you're going to love. 100 Astros and Blazers and with zero down. Come on, let's all take a look together. Zero down delivers. Drive a 1996 four-door Blazer with zero down and only $328 a month. Or drive a 95 Chevrolet Astro van for zero down and only $278 a month. Many thanks and happy holidays. And as always, Team Pasadena, we got the trucks! From sports to kid shows, documentaries to drama, movies to music videos, Cable has got you covered. For the best way to cover your customers, call us. Cable Advertising. It works. Heroes, pride of the community. Should teams stay put, or do owners have the right to go where the money is? It's an all-new Outside the Lines, live from Cleveland. Teams on the move. Tomorrow at 9 Eastern on ESPN. The Raiders are hungry for the playoffs and head into Seattle to face off against the Seahawks in the Kingdom in their quest for a postseason bird. What else are you going to watch on Sunday night? 60 Minutes? Tate on the sideline just picked up the touchdown 21 to 7 his numbers now 10 of 66 or 10 for 66 with two touchdowns and Mike if you can believe it in the first game between Toledo and Nevada at almost this exact time of the second quarter this was the score 21 to 7 Nevada went on to score two unanswered to tie it up at 21 so we're a long way from this thing being out of hand I believe everything you say no more excuses get practice for guys start four months for this game it's time to play. You understand what I'm saying? And you go out back out there and you fucking make a play. Well, I was afraid we might take that too far. <laughs> Ron, two good drives by Toledo. Ten plays, 76 yards, and seven for 89 yards. Kick on the ground is going to be taken by Ernie Wilson at the six. Breaks it at the 35, and he'll go to the 40. Well, the Thrifty Car Rental Bowl Week begins Wednesday, December the 27th. Eight big bowls here at ESPN. One big week. Some of the outstanding matchups include A&M in Michigan, December the 28th, and the Builder Square Alamo Bowl of Virginia against Georgia, December the 30th, and the Peach Bowl. How about January the 1st? Penn State against Auburn, New Year's Day in the Outback Bowl down in Tampa. Ron, this is a series I would expect. Steve McHenry, the tight end, 87. The way things are going for Toledo, the way they're playing this thing, that he becomes a primary receiver for Mike Maxwell. Wilson. Boy, that is a good one-on-one -on -one tackle. 
as Marcus Matthews, number 30. He's only a sophomore out of Akron and took his feet right out from under him. And, Ron, he's an outside linebacker at 5'10", 180 pounds. And see, that's the style, this 4-2 defense. You move these outside linebackers up and, and play. Uh, they're former corners that uh, can good speed and play like linebackers, but he's only 5'10", 180, playing close to the line of scrimmage. That's the reason he got those 30 sequence numbers in. Maxwell with a long count right over the middle got him wide open and he dropped the ball Van Dyke now they're going to say that the ball is still alive he did have possession crowd's kind of buzzing about that he fumbled the ball and picked it up so they're saying reception a fumble and then advancing I don't know if he had it Ron but yeah. he's smart to go back and get it Clarence Love with the hit and get some help from Mark Heron, number 13. And as you can see, a player shaken up. 13, Mark Heron getting up. So officially, it will be catch, fumble, recovered his own fumble, and advances the ball to make it a third down, and they need three. Boy, defense could have relaxed on that. He might have picked it up and scored. Maxwell short drop and the pass incomplete. At the 45-yard line, Wilkins is who he wanted. They're just misfiring on offense, Ron. You made the point about Mike Maxwell early in the ball game. He's just not in the flow of things here in the first half, not having a good first half off in his passes. And I think a lot of credit goes to Tom Amstutz, the defensive coordinator of Toledo, changing up every play, giving him different looks. On the left footer last time, drilled one. 54 yards as you look at Mace Freeman, who's back on a single safety. And Toledo's got to return him. This is a bullet. He's going to run away from it at the five. And it takes a Toledo bounce into the end zone. 53 yards on the kick. How about NFL game day and NFL primetime? Catch a double dose on NFL game day Saturday and Sunday at a new time, 11.30 a.m. Eastern time. Then on Sunday night, NFL primetime has all the highlights of the day's NFL action. Ron Franklin, along with Mike Gottfried and Mike Mayock, who is down on the sideline with us tonight. We've got a 21 to 7 ball game, Toledo. And reminding you, if you just joined us, Toledo, one of the three undefeated teams left in Division One. The other two are playing in the Fiesta Bowl. Counter trail. Looking for some daylight, and he's going to wind up with a gain of six, maybe seven. The game plan of Gary Pinko offensively and Mike Dunbar, the offensive coordinator, to come out and throw the football early in the ball game and then set the run up. Sometimes, you know, people want to run the football and set the pass up. You can do it vice versa. And Mike Dunbar, the offensive coordinator, a nice job coming out here, spreading out the defense in Nevada, throwing the football. Then all of a sudden, now you're seeing LaShawn Tate a lot in the running game, Ron. Good idea, good scheme tonight. Well, like right now, the clock is running Mike they'll snap this ball at around 610 or 605 hey, 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 hey. this Nevada defense has had to be on the field far too much in the second quarter they need some help from the offense let's take a timeout 14 point lead but the Rockets will be right back oh uh, <laughs> snowman My own mutual fund. Presenting a gift of shares, a mutual fund gift from Alliance Capital. For just $250, you can start anyone you love investing this holiday season. The gift of shares, another way Alliance Capital gives you mutual funds without the mystery. Wrangler jeans, available in the two colors boys prefer most. Black and blue. Wrangler, real comfortable. Pine Lake. Three friends. Three pair of Wrangler jeans. Everybody's comfortable. Even the fish. 
spring. Real comfortable jeans. When I was really young, I could eat anything I wanted and still have energy to burn. But now, to get my body to perform, it takes real food. Power Bar is a balanced combination of all the low-fat, healthy foods my body needs for the energy to perform at its peak every day. And it not only works great, it tastes great. So even though I'm not as young as I used to be, I still have energy to burn. Power Bar. Be ready. Las Vegas, Nevada, the city that never sleeps. 21 to 7 are scored. Mike, this backs up the point we're making about how much the Nevada defense is getting fussed at a little bit right now. But their offense has only had the ball 222 in this entire quarter. Yeah, they haven't been able to put any drives together to control the clock and to, and to control the chains. And they've been three and out, uh, four or five plays and out. Toledo's done a better job controlling the ball. Plus, Rashawn Tate gives the home run threat. So let's see if. The Nevada defense can come up big right here and get it back to the offense. Quick handoff. This is Ingle. Breaks one tackle, tries to break another, and James Johnson finally says, nope, this is the end of the road. But that is the first down. Mike, why does he have 43 on his sleeve and 34 in his jersey? Look at that. You're asking me that. Uh, out of the clear blue, you're asking me that. I. Well, maybe, I have no idea. He's uh, maybe the equipment guy yeah. was with our crew last night. Well, the equipment guy either uh, <laughs> overslept or uh, had one too many to drink at the Barbary Coast. <laughs> Bojack waits for the cut, and he wanted Ingle again. He had the single coverage, but James Johnson was out there on him well. Now, I think we, Mike Mayock will find that out for us now because you asked that question, and everybody in America now is waiting to find that answer out. So Mike Mayock has to find that out. Everything that we've read about these two teams, nothing said anything about Ingold being either 43 or 34. You know what? He probably did it because he said, you know what? Ron Franklin's so astute in that press box and he's going to see that and he's going to talk about me tonight. That's a good. And you are astute. Second down and 10 from the 35. They go option play and the pitch back to Tate. Tate really gets roughed up by that Nevada defense this time, particularly James Canada. And we understand that Mr. Mayock has the answer on the sideline. Mike? <laughs> well, the mystery continues. I asked a bunch of people over here, including the equipment manager, and the equipment manager looked at me and said, I have no idea. Well, that's good. I mean, I mean, now we're all cleared, see? But one more thing. Another guy just came up as I was giving the report, and he said that the maker, the manufacturer, just kind of screwed it up and inverted the numbers, and the fullback angle liked it because he's a nutball anyway, so they went with it. She had that fullback mentality. Right. right. That's, that's good. Hits. Third down and 10, and you can hear this Nevada crowd up and asking their defense to get a stop. Pass. Got it complete, and Toledo's going to hold on to the football and move the chains as Spriggs is right there in front of the bench to make the catch. With just too big a cushion for James Spriggs, number 80 on the outside. See Mike Guider, number 9, in quarter coverage. He's got the quarter of the field deep, so he's backing up. And just too much room for Mike Guider in front of James Spriggs there, number 80, for the catch. Spriggs now has three catches for 44 yards. I don't know if you saw it after the play, but Deshaun Miles had better be careful because the officials came over and grabbed him. He was jawing at Spriggs pretty hard after the play. Five yards looked as though he might only have one as Deshaun Miles makes the tackle on him. And remember, just three weeks ago, Deshaun Miles had an appendectomy. He's from here in Las Vegas. And he's playing uh, lights out tonight. He's the leading player on that defensive team in Nevada. Ron, you talked earlier about Don James. Uh, Gary Pinkle was a former assistant with Don James. He's here tonight. Keith Gilbertson, also the former Cal coach, yeah. uh, who was on that same staff, came up here tonight to watch this game, too. So a lot of respect, a lot of camaraderie among those coaches. About to go under four minutes to play until halftime. 
Toledo. The swing pass to Tate. There's double coverage out there. He gets by with a great move to the 40-yard line. And Deshaun Miles makes the tackle on Tate. Almost had a sh chance for the interception, Deshaun Miles, because Ryan Hushak, when he went back to throw that ball, Deshaun Miles was in the path, but he just lofted it over the head of Deshaun Miles. Watch this. He, he falls down. The ball's over his head. Now watch him come back and make the play on Deshaun Tate. Great effort by number 30, Deshaun Miles. Here's the isolation on him. Blocked. Now gets his hands up. Now the ball's thrown. Now go make the tackle. Never stopped. Always in action. Deshaun Miles, an excellent play. You're right. If Ingle had not gotten a piece of him, then he might have batted it in the air or made the pickoff. Well, that's what you want in a quick passing game. You want to get those hands down. He fell down. And let me say, in both teams' defense, both clubs have slipped on that insignia because of all the paint, I would assume, right there in the middle of the field. He was going to reverse that out and just fell down at the 48. Nevada needs to stop badly on defense because even though they can score, they have not shown a good sign tonight offensively. They're just not clicking this. Chris Alt talking on the sideline to his offensive players needs to get some kind of uh, clock management out of his offense. 303 and counting left until the halftime. Short drop this time, and that pass is trapped. It's incomplete. They have that pass anytime they want it because of the quarter quarter coverage. Both defensive backs taking deep coverage on that side. James Spriggs is open. Ryan Hushak, he'd like to have that one back because he had a wide open James Spriggs on the outside. You see Spriggs number eight. Now see Mike Guider again. He's got deep coverage, so he's given the cushion, and there's the bounce to James Spriggs. A reaction by Ryan Hushak. He knew that he had a wide open pass. Talk about ball control. This is the tenth play of this Toledo drive. Draw again, possibly. Nope, that's wrong. Pressure is on. Can't get away. Loses the football, and Devon has recovered at the 48 yard line. That is Lorenzo who is on the ball. Well, we talked about turnovers always going in the favor of Toledo when you talk, when you look at their differential they've had 34 takeaways only given up 12 themselves here's one now where Ryan Hushak's going to make a mistake drop the football good tackle by David Miller Aaron Lozano number 44 now Ron you can get close to if they can score you can have your halftime score your first game that's right that's exactly right let's see if Nevada can take advantage of this miscue by Toledo as we mentioned they lead the nation in turnover ratio Wilson tries to get to the short side of the field, comes out of bounds at around the 43, and a late flag, and they're going to call Toledo for a hit out of bounds, a personal foul. It's going to be called on Mark here in the safety. Let's take a look at it here. Good blocking in the offensive line, trying to slow down that rush with the draw. I'll tell you one thing. It looked like Mark Heron tried to pull off. He does hit him, but he tried to pull off a little bit. I don't know. Close on Ernie Wilson, number 20. Dead ball. Personal foul. Late hit. Out of bounds. 15 yard penalty. First down. Let's go back and give the significance of this as well. We had talked about Toledo leading the nation in a plus turn 22 turnover margin, over 12 turnovers and 34 takeaways. This is only their 13th turnover of the year, and now they come up with a mistake and a major penalty against them. Well, I'm not sure that was a penalty. I'm not, I, I know it's called and it's in the books, but I'm not sure. I agree with Mark Heron. I don't think that was much of a penalty, but Chris Alt needs to make Toledo pay for the penalty and the turnover right here with the touchdown. Draw play, Wilson. Steve Haynes makes the stop, and Chris Fowler, let's check in with you. Well, Ron, coming up at halftime, plenty of other sports news to tell you about, including an NBA buzzer beater. Cal introduces its new football coach today, and we'll also have our hidden video plays of the year as Coach Corso joins me. That's coming up at halftime. Okay. Can't wait. We will be here in front of the monitor there, Chris. 
Second down and nine. Pass over the middle. Here's Van Dyke. Tries to get a block and he retreated and it cost him a couple of yards. Now it's going to be third down. Wilson made the tackle. They're going to have about what four or five yards to get the first. Well, I think the way the bat is looking at it now it's just two down territory for him. Ron as they take a timeout. A minute 50 seconds left until halftime. Ron. Mike Maxwell throwing the football slides down again but able to get his feet up under and get the ball to Alex Van Dyke on the quick release. He's going to be tackled. Look how he's carrying that football. Needs to put it away. He's carrying like a loaf of bread. Aristotle Wilson number 21 making the tackle. Mike here's a did you know and I hope Chris Fowler's listening okay. back at the studio. Now is this a question when, for me or Chris well, Fowler? No not really. It's just it's a, this is a you didn't know this happened. When Long Beach State played in the 1970 Pasadena Bowl which which hosted the Big West champion. They played against a team coached by a current TV sports star. Can you name him? I can name him. Long Beach State faced ESPN's Lee Corso. Lee Corso, who coached the Louisville Cardinals in that game. Long Beach and Louisville played to a 24-24 tie. I'm sure that Lee will want to talk about that at halftime. And show. Right. Lee bought a lot of tickets so they could go out there for that bowl game. <laughs> Ron, as you look at Chris Ald, he's given a play to Mike Maxwell. Jeff Horton, he retired from coaching, hired Jeff Horton for a year, and then Jeff Horton jumped over here to Nevada, Las Vegas, and the players went to Chris Ald and says, hey, why don't you come back and coach? So he was only out one year, came back, coached, and now he's on that sideline doing a great job here in Nevada. 19 seasons, 163 wins for Chris Ald. Third down. Here's that pass play now. Van Dyke at the 20 with a stiff arm close to the first down and again that pass was a that was a lateral that was away from the line of scrimmage. I think you'll see a double pass on that thing but Jamal Belt really made a great play on this came to Toledo as a walk on average is 5.6 tackles a year you'll see him come out of the secondary and make a strong tackle good straight arm by Alex Van Dyke. Captain came to Toledo as a walk on with a big play there. Jamal Belt, six interceptions, senior out of Highland Park, Michigan. Nevada's got two timeouts, Ron, 141 on the clock, so a lot of time for him. You see three wide receivers. Go to the left. From Toledo. Pass. Nice job defensively at the 15 yard line by Jamal Belt. He just knocked it away. And Jones was the man coming with the pressure, number 91. Alex Van Dyke getting loose on Jamal Belt right on his pocket. Good instincts, makes the strip with his right hand, is able to come in, knock the hand away from Alex Van Dyke, knock the ball away. Good play by Jamal Belt. The impressive thing also about what Belt did is he didn't have that other hand in the small of his back, which a lot of defensive backs do, and no, that's the reason they get flashed. Nice good, good form. Good technique. Second down and ten. The bottom trying to get back in this winner. Down by 14. Pass for the end zone. Got a man open. Hot at the one-yard line. Did he get in? It'll be a first and goal as Wilkins got it and then stepped out of bounds just before the cone. Well, everybody likes to run this route. This route's called the smash route around the NFL where the outside receiver comes inside and the inside receiver runs a corner route. There's a blitz on by Toledo. Marcus Matthews, number 30, with the blitz. But Damon Wilkins on the corner route, wide open just inside the one. Mike Maxwell with a good throw and Ron, if they can score here, they'll have your halftime score the first game. That's exactly right. That's what it was in that first ball game. 21 to 14 at halftime. They fake it to Miner as a flag comes down. They give it to Wilson and he's going to lose a yard. Benny again at quarterback as Eric comes in. Mike Maxwell goes out in this uh, goal line situation. Usually where that penalty flag is thrown, it's offside on Toledo. Must be about a half an inch penalty. <laughs> That's about the truth. 
offside. Half the distance to the goal. Repeat. First down. May have been Jamie Johnson. Jamie Johnson, yeah. the linebacker. A little too tight. He was over by a face mask. Backup quarterback, Eric Bennett in the ball game. Remember, he's a good runner. Wouldn't expect him here. Such a quarterback sweep type play. First and goal. Bennett in a quarterback. And there you can see how close it is. It didn't didn't fire. It's a break for us. Yes, everybody in the stadium. <laughs> so Shea will come out and try to make it a seven-point ball game. Damon is a freshman out of Chico, California. got it and as you can see on that uh, clock and the insertion top left only 59 seconds left until halftime and Ron you go back to the uncharacteristic play of the Toledo offense fumbling the football and then getting a 15 yard penalty and Ken Miner in the end zone to make it a 21 14 ball game. Dodge halftime report. Reggie White, the status on him. Also, the award blitz and hidden video play of the year. All of that and more on halftime. Coming up right here on ESPN. Brought to you by the new Dodge. Uh, Gary Pinkle over on the sideline, uh, thinking about what his club just did and also what they did not do. But I can tell you, there are a whole lot of coaches across America who would like to only have 13 turnovers at this juncture be playing in a ball game, huh? Oh, that's, not, that's the reason they're in this ball that's game right. because of the 13 turnovers and 16 seniors who have really given great leadership to this Toledo Rocket program. Harrison Patton back in a dual safety. And this is going to be Harris. He had a 49 yarder to open the ball game, but not this time. Well, I take that back. He breaks a tackle, breaks another one, and he's off and running. To the 43 yard line, and a late flag comes in as Don Morgan had to save a possible touchdown. And now, Ron, 49 seconds. Toledo has two timeouts. They may get a face mask here to go a little bit further. Well, that's a 38 yard return. Now it's way back. The flag's way back. I think they're going to bring this one back on Toledo. Talked about it early that we have a, uh, a split crew, a Mid American and Big West crew, so they have them work together. This is a split group. Illegal block in the back by the receiving team during the return. Face pass by the kicking team during the return. Both penalties offset. We will re-kick. Dwayne Harris, the kick returner, Ron, trying to do what he did on the first kickoff. Set up good field position for the Toledo offense. Good moves. Poor tackling by Nevada. The Wolfpack. Did not a good job tackling Dwayne Harris. There's the face mask. And I think that might have been uh, Wilson, Aristotle Wilson, that uh, was called for the push in the back. Don Morgan on the face mask call. As we mentioned, Jack Gatto is the referee, the umpire, Dave Novak. Jeff Hansen, the linesman. Field judge is Judson Howard. Keith Ferguson for the Big West is the back judge. Gary Arthur, the line judge. And Joe Duncan is the side judge. And Ron, they sought you out yesterday because they wanted to make sure you knew, which I knew you knew, is that uh, the tiebreaker is in effect for all bowl games. All this year. bowl games this year. So we could see that tonight. Possibility. First year for Division I tiebreakers. We were looking at Dwayne Harris just a moment ago. 49 yarder to open the ball game tonight. Had a 38 yarder, which has just been canceled out because of the offsetting penalties. Toledo was kind of looking for a, a line drive kick, but Harris had to go back and 
retrieve it. And he's going to take it out of the 28-yard line. I'm talking about the tiebreaker. Division one double A's used it in their playoff games for years, so uh, a lot of strategy in it for coaches, whether or not to take the ball uh, or let the other team take it first, so you get it second. A lot of coaches like to kick it at the table. We're short on time here in the third quarter. We'll explain what it's about. Tate breaks it over the middle, crossed them up a little bit, going to gain eight as they were looking, to, I think, for a pass play. Hushak in the first half, 13 of 21, 146 yards. And maybe it looks like Toledo's going to be content with their 21-14 uh, lead. They still have two timeouts, 24 seconds, but uh, we'll, see, we'll see what they get on this play, whether it's a quarterback draw or something that they can get across the 50 and then use a the timeout. Clock down to 14, now 13, and Hujak in the quarterback draw. And that's going to be the last play in this first half unless somebody stops the clock. They'll have to, to move the chains, but unless somebody calls a timeout. I would think Toledo would use a timeout here. Ten seconds to go. They're in position if they can get the ball down the field, a couple throws here to make something happen. Well, since we have got the timeout, let's uh, let's show you a graphic, and as best we can, we'll explain quickly the uh, the procedure as far as the overtime rules. Coin toss: the winner may not defer. Possession is going to start at the opponent 25-yard line. The game continues until tie is broken after both teams have had equal number of overtime possessions. Now, the thing you were talking about about a team. As far as getting the ball first, that's not the most important thing because if you get a stop, they get the ball at the 25 yard line. You get a stop. You got it at the 25. Mike, if you got a good kicker, you can line up, kick a field goal, and the overtime is over. Yeah, I don't want the ball first in that yeah. situation. I'd prefer to have it second. Uh, now, you can look at it the other way and, and score the touchdown and try to put pressure on the other team. So uh, throw the first punch, but I'd prefer to have the ball second. Back up. In all the bowl games, all across the country this year, we'll have the tiebreaker, so we're not going to have a tie here tonight. And I shouldn't say that. I guess you did. Uh, <laughs> oh, you have just put the curse on this book. shut the booth. casinos down, though, so. Uh, <laughs> now Hujak sets to throw. Ten seconds left. He's hit, gets away, and he's going to do the smart thing and just go down. Two seconds. Now it is down to one, and that is the end of the first half. Wait a minute. We uh, we may have one more play because there's one tick left on the clock. They got it stopped. Timeout. University of Toledo. That is their third and last timeout. Ron, what you do here is you got one play to just hang it up to Hail Mary. If you choose to do it here, a lot of things can happen. You can get interference. You get the tip ball. A lot of things on that last play. And as everybody knows, you can't end a half on a defensive penalty, so it's exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, able... I like it offensively. You got one second, put it up. That's what Mike Dunbar, who's standing there talking to Ryan Hushak, the quarterback, he's the offensive coordinator holding on to his quarterback, making that last play call. And he's had an excellent game plan here in the first half. Total yards in the first half, Toledo 302 and Nevada 193. Yeah, now they, and plus they've got a long halftime here at the half, so you got a great time to uh, spend some time with your offense and defense and make some adjustments. So it'll be a key here at the half because you got that extended half. Now, Hujak will line up in a shotgun formation. One second left on the clock. On top, got a man down there, and it's going to be intercepted. That's Hassan. Got a blocker in front, and finally pushed out of bounds. Hushak made the tackle. So two first-half turnovers. 
halftime. Toledo 21 and Nevada 14. Chris Fowler, we are not lacking for action in Las Vegas. Not a good first half, Brian. I, I want to see overtime in this bowl game. Let's go till 1 o'clock in the morning. You think we'll see overtime in a bowl game this year? Yes, we will, because percentages are a guy would rather have overtime to go for that two and miss it. Almost had it in the SEC championship game. What about the first half so far? Well, numerous penalties and mistakes on a kicking game, and the reason they have more in bowl games than a regular season, the coaches don't spend enough time practicing because of the limited practice time. They're out partying too much. Special teams, <laughs> most important. The coaches are games. partying or the players? The players and the coaches. Okay, coming up on our new Dodge Halftime Report, we'll look ahead to some bowls. We'll also have our hidden video plays of the year, our Blitz Awards show, and other sports news right after this. The Rockets by a touch over the Wolfpack. Highlights in that first half. It all started with the quarterback, Hujak, hitting for the touchdown. Well, it's a 31 yard run, and he's most dangerous when he's running the football. But this set the tempo in the first quarter for the touchdown. Then you got Washan Tate doing his Barry Sanders Dave Megat act for the touchdown and Alex Van Dyke catching a pass and breaking it outside all the way down to the two yard line with the good reception shows his explosive receiving style. Mike Van Dyke in the first half had six catches 104 yards and uh, as far as total yards Toledo 302 yards in the first half and Nevada 193 but there's a time of possession I was talking about a great imbalance and that's something that Nevada has to do something about let's go down to the sideline and Mike Mayock Mike thanks Ron I had the opportunity to speak with coaches from both staffs and on the Toledo side they were pretty happy with the first half although frustrated with the late turnover and the touchdown off of that on the other side however Chris Alt the Nevada head coach was livid especially with his defense he said they haven't seen anything new scheme wise but he thought his team did a horrible job of tackling especially on with Sean Tate so keep your eye and also on the offense he said hey our wide receivers couldn't catch anything so it's defense tackling offense catch the football back up there okay thanks very much that's uh, I knew that that he was not happy with with what had gone on in the first half but I'll tell you what that little guy right there caused some of those missed tackles as well Spring will kick it off. This is Wilson from the six yard line. He gets taken down hard at the 27, so we're underway. 21 14. Toledo leading as we open this third quarter. Kick off the respect they have for Nevada's deep players kicking the old knuckleball. Ernie Wilson on the return. Let's see what Nevada's Mike Maxwell can get started. Just see if we see Steve McHenry a little bit more in the second half in the tight end. 33, 16. Running play with Miner. Haynes at the line of scrimmage will make the hit on him. It'll be a gain of about three on the play. Ron, you want defensive linemen to get off blocks because you're going to get blocked. But how you get off blocks, Steve Haynes did a nice job there getting off the block of Steve McHenry, the tight end, and able to make the play. Once you're blocked, get off, use your hands, and make the tackle. He leads the team in sacks. He had seven this year. Senior out of Glendale, Arizona. This is Ernie Wilson. Wilson breaks it out over the 38 to the 39-yard line. Dues on the stop, and he's going to have a first down for Nevada. You know, at the long halftime, we'll see how both teams react in the 30-minute halftime that they've had. But when you look at the statistics again, in the first half, Nevada Wolfpack had 10 rushes for only 28 yards. And when you're a passing football team, you want to take pressure off the quarterback with that rush. You want to be able to run the football. They come out, first two plays, run the football successfully. Toledo showing blitz. 21, On to play again with Wilson. And Jamie Johnson this time will come up to make the stop. Almost the same type game plan Toledo started with. In their first drive, they came out throwing the ball to open with Sean Tate. Now, Chris Ald comes out trying to run the football to open up his passing game a little bit more. By the way, the numbers on Maxwell in the first half, Mike, 12 of 23. 
165 yards and the longest of course the 71 yarder to Alex Van Dyke. Biggest thing in the first half no mistakes by Mike Maxwell didn't turn the ball over. Drop play to Wilson. Close to the first down but he's going to be about a yard and a half shy. Rob Whitfield came over to knock him down. Well you can just about uh, figure out what Chris Ault said to his football team at halftime that we've got to run the football. Hey we've got two big tackles. We got Mike Rockwood who's seven foot tall 320 pounds on one side. Darren Thorpe on the other side who's 6 8 305. We ought to be able to run the football. So he has challenged his offensive line. You see Toledo jumping around on defense and they stack six men at the line of scrimmage and Wilson is going to have the first down behind the block of Thornton and Bob Cooper. Ron, that was the 46 defense. Excuse me, that was the 46 defense the Bears made famous, and it's a tough defense to run against. But again, good push by Mike Rockwood, the left tackle, and Thorpe. That was a look at Thorpe right there. Cooper yesterday, number 63. You see him out front trying to kick out on the block. He was at the luncheon that representing at Nevada. And I'll tell you the story right after this play right here. First down at the 49 of Toledo. Blitz got it away and has it complete. Close to the first down at the 39-yard line. Alex Van Dyke with the reception. Ron, what happens when you start running the football successfully? Then Toledo's going to cheat into the eight-man front. They're going to try to stop the run, which means it's going to open up the passing game on the outside. That's what they didn't have in the first half, didn't have both dimensions. You've got to be able to run the football. Van Dyke now seven receptions, 114 yards. I asked Cooper yesterday, how does it feel to be the smallest man in the offensive line? He's 6'4", 275. He said, I'll tell you what, we scare some buffet operators out of their mind. All you can eat, uh -huh. hit in the backfield, and that time Parkhill got through. Ernie Wilson, as soon as he got the football, was knocked down for a loss. That's the answer to the eight-man front. You can blitz a linebacker out of the out of his linebacker position Brent Hill number 46 is going to run through not get picked up make the play on Ernie Wilson in the backfield busted blocking assignment on the right side of the offensive line by the Wolfpack to 25 that's McHenry and it is a first down Nevada to 23 yard line Rob Whitfield defensively so much too deep being used by Toledo you figure it's just a matter of time till they're able to spring their tight end number 87 Steve McHenry down the field he's six foot three Ron and when the Toledo coach watched all the game films of the Wolfpack this year they said he never dropped the football has great hands Steve McHenry that's only his first catch tonight as we mentioned off the top of the telecast he was second on the team with 59 receptions for almost 800 yards well, he was about to get himself a penalty, so let's take a timeout. 11.05 left in the third, Toledo by seven. Four action-filled days. Four entertaining nights. Four dining. Four rooms. Four excitement. Dial 1-800-4-Laughlin. 1-800-4-Laughlin for free information on a value-packed summer getaway to the Colorado River and Laughlin, Nevada. 1-800-452-8445. For the fun of it, for Laughlin. Santa, I've uh, had another job offer. Oh, no. How can we change your mind? How about a raise? Mmm. Company sled? No one can resist Long John Silver's popcorn fish or new country style popcorn shrimp. A quarter pound with fries is just $1.99. Maybe if you gave me your popcorn fish. Keep in touch, kid. Right now, collect a holiday crystal for just 99 cents each. Enterprise, hi, I'm at the repair shop. I need to rent a car. Enterprise will arrange to pick you up. This is great. Drive you to our place and get you on your way. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up.
When you go up to Seattle, you find out that Magnolia Ace Hardware makes new ideas a family affair. And your local Ace will give you plenty of ideas on how to save throughout the holidays. It's true, Ace is the place for the helpful hardware folks. The Las Vegas Bowl is presented by Las Vegas. It's nonstop action around the clock, and we're open 24 hours. And in part by Long John Silver's, America's place to go for great-tasting shrimp and fish. Las Vegas, Nevada. This is Las Vegas Bowl number four. Inside Caesars. Big Mike Rockwood, seven feet, 320 pounds. Mike was talking about him. The the amazing thing about him, he's only been playing football for four years. Our pro scouts are here tonight. I saw Rod Humanick, who scouts. Uh, they like these two tackles because they've got good feet, good ad agility, to move. Swings it out. That is to Wilson. He puts a head down and goes tough to the 17-yard line. Aristotle Wilson comes over to make the tackle on him. The crowd really enjoyed it yesterday, though, when Cooper talked about it. I asked him if they ever had eating competitions, and he said no, but truthfully, he said, when we walk into a place that's an all-you-can-eat, he said they shudder. They probably want to shut the door and put a padlock on it. And there's a few of those places here. <laughs> <laughs> Their pictures probably up the buffet line. <laughs> See the length of the time on this drive is Nevada trying to reverse their course of the first half. Pass for the end zone. It is incomplete as Wilkins got turned around and Craig Dews was back there on the cover. Talk about a valuable player on defense. This is Craig Dews because he stands around the line of scrimmage. He can play the run. Now all of a sudden he has to be a linebacker defensive back type and play a wide receiver like Damon Wilkins, number five, and he's in pretty good position there. That's the toughest position to find in this defense, the outside linebackers, because you want a little bit of a corner and a little bit of a linebacker in that player. Mikey had an interception for a touchdown in game one between these two teams. Four of eight on third down conversions, and a slip by Maxwell. <laughs> Jason Richards was right there. Looked like again that they thought somebody was going to jump offside and the center snapped the ball quickly. And then Mike Maxwell tried to pick it up with the uh, quarterback sneak. No, I think it was the movement of the defensive line. Hadwick went ahead and snapped the football, and uh, the quarterback, Mike Maxwell, was not ready for it. So this will be a 34 yard attempt. McHenry to hold. His longest this year is 38. Distance and he's got it. So we'll take a break. 9:29 left of the third quarter. Our new score: 21 to 17. Toledo's lead cut to four. How do you wake up a 200-pound gorilla? Very carefully. He awakes irritable, he moves slowly, stooped in posture, and his ferocious appearance wards off lesser creatures. But while grooming, the invigorating scent of coast revives the beast. He luxuriates in the abundant ladder, so that finally, he's alert. Animal. And eager to face the jungle out there. Coast, the eye-opener. Wishes you and yours a very happy holiday season. It's as old as the wheel. Man seeks rental cars that are not only nice, but of course nearby. That's why Thrifty made them so handy. With car rentals right at the airport, 
or right in the neighborhood. Look for the thrifty location nearest you. And don't forget to use your Montgomery Ward credit card at Montgomery Ward Car Rental at all thrifty locations. Your neighborhood thrifty car rental, historically known for low rates. Chris off talking to his offensive unit as the lead now down to four. Mike? Ron, when you have the offensive center comes out and all of a sudden he makes the calls to the offensive line, then you're going to see Toledo move a defense, move their nose guard over and get into a 46 look. Now all of a sudden everything changes for the center and he snaps the football. I think he just forgot the blocking assignment. He was so concentrated yeah. on the blocking assignment because it changed and that's why you stem defensive linemen to, confu defensive linemen to confuse the offensive line. They confused Jeff Hadley. Mike is one of the ways to counter that to either set your play or go on a, on a shorter count to try to catch it. Go on a shorter count or a later count so you make them make their move so you know what they're in. Or like you said, go quick so that you get them before they move. That was Patton back to the 21-yard line, and let's go down to the sideline. Mike Mayock with a special guest. Hey, Ron, thank you very much. I've got Paul Christensen. He's the chairman of the board of the Las Vegas Convention and Visitors Authority. And, Paul, this is the fourth annual Las Vegas Bowl. On the way things look tonight, it gets better and better each year. How important are events like this in Las Vegas? Well, they're super important. This is a tourist town, and we... We love these kind of events, especially this time of the year, because this is a slow time of the year, and it, and it really fills up our rooms. It's just a great thing for us, and it's a great weather, and it's a perfect time for a bowl. We love them. And how about 96? What do you have on tap for 96? Oh, gee, uh, 96, we got hotels open. We got the tallest tower in the world, the Observation Tower, the Stratosphere Tower. We got the Fremont Street Experience. We've got the hotel rooms coming on the line. We're just having a great time here. This is Wonderful yeah. town. Is that tower the one with the roller coaster on the outside? That's right. It's got a roller, uh, coaster up on, a roller coaster up on top. Comes around the outside. Well, I think the question is, is Ron Franklin or Mike Godfrey the first rider of that roller coaster? Godfrey, Godfrey has volunteered. <laughs> I think I bought that roller coaster. <laughs> yeah, they've started on the second one you purchased. <laughs> Tate with the sweep blocker in front. Not going to do any good. He gets knocked down hard. At the 25, James Canada. Porter. James Canada with a good play. And also Lamont Porter, number 49, the outside backer. Really didn't give Washant Tate a chance to get started here. Deep handoff. It's going to go outside automatically. And you see Lamont Taylor, number 49, with a pretty good tackle on Washant Tate. So what is third down? The line to make is the 31 yard line. Nevada's fans up on this side of the field asking the defense to come up with a stop. Blitz from the outside. Pass is caught at the 31-yard line. And let's see where the spot is. They're going to have the first down. Scott Brunswick with a reception right over the middle. Johnson and Overby on the stop. Rod, LaShawn Tate makes another good block. When you're a great back, you do it all. You catch the football, you run the football, and you protect your quarterback. Look how he stayed square, low, uncoiled, and made a good, solid block to get that ball off in the first down. He does it all. I'm impressed with LaShawn Tate. LaShawn, 1,905 yards rushing. As Mike said, showing that he can do a little bit of everything. Pass, one of the thrown this time. Springs is the man that he wanted up at the 45-yard line, and that one kind of got away from Hoosier. I mentioned the fact that uh, Gary Pinkle coming from Washington as the offensive coordinator that the last two years have really stepped up for them offensively. Mike. In seasons 94 and 95, they have averaged 32, almost 33 points a ball game, and the average offense per ball game is 420 yards. And Ron, that's a good league. It's a good competitive league, the Mid American Conference. Tate over the 35. Juan Hall has a hold of him. Talking about the Mid-American Conference, uh, a lot of great coaches came through the Mid-American Conference. I, I think right off the top of my head, and of course you're going to forget some, but Doyle Perry, the job he did at Bowling Green for years. Uh, we talked about Frank Lauderbur, and uh, just so many great coaches come through that league every year. Bill Hess in Ohio U, and uh, Johnny Pond in Miami. Just over and over, you just keep mentioning Miami Cradle coaches for many years. Third down. 
both sides standing and cheering. It is seven yards to pick up the first. Kuzak has a man open and throws it complete at the 45-yard line, and it's Steve Rossi, the tight end, a senior out of Fairmont, West Virginia. Tate again with an outstanding block. Let me tell you about Rossi. He was the representative for the Toledo Ball Club yesterday, and he told me during the luncheon that he has never played tight end until he came to Toledo. He was an offensive lineman and a defensive lineman. Well, he but, separated his shoulders the second game of the year, Ron. You see the good catch here. But he spent about four hours, four days a week this summer going out and catching passes from Ryan Husak, and it paid off. Pitch to Tate, tries to turn the corner, and he does. Has 10 yards and counted off it. Well, let's see, 12, maybe 13. James Johnson finally got to him, and it was Engel again out front with a block. Well, you, when you run the eye attack, you better have a fullback that's going to block. It's just like the Dallas Cowboys when you got Emmett Smith behind Johnson. But Eric Engel, number 34, you're going to pick him up. Even though he lines up offset, watch his block on the corner. That gets the block on Mike Guider, number nine. But that got LaShawn Tate the corner, the block by Eric Engel. The guy with two numbers, 34 and 43. <laughs> but they found out about it. He said, I don't want to change it. Play action going to go on top for the end zone, and it is overthrown. Just a little too long. Spriggs is the man that he wanted, and that was excellent coverage on the point uh, on the part of Guider. Nice coverage by Mike Guider. Step by step, number nine on James Spriggs, number 80. Good coverage. And for people who say, well, that looks like pass interference, not so. Both have a right to the football, and he was closer to it. So it is second down and 10. You just joined us, Toledo 21, Nevada 17. We have 6.16 to play third quarter. This is the ninth play of the Toledo drive. Pressure from the outside, they swing the pass out, and good heavens, Tate dropped it, and Lamont Porter was coming pell-mell for the quarterback. Well, they blitz Lamont Porter, number 49, off the left corner. You're gonna see number 49 come. Deshaun Miles also on the blitz from the other side. Ball thrown to Deshaun Tate. Just couldn't hang on. So it's third down again. And this is like in the game of golf, trying to make a living off five-foot putts for pars. Third down conversion, 60% for Toledo tonight. Here they come with the blitz again. The flag is down. They're going to be called for offside. Bouchak running for his life. Finally got it away as Porter was after him. But I believe that Nevada will be penalized five yards for jumping the gun. It looked like Steve Rossi pointed up at Porter and said, yeah, you were offside, yeah. didn't it? <laughs> yeah. Ron, what you try to do as an outside backer, you get used to the cadence of the quarterback in the first half. You try to time up the cadence. Mm -hmm. Lamont Porter just a little bit too quick. Defense. Offside. Five-yard penalty. Previous spot, repeat, third down. Now, Ron, do you give the ball to a Sean Tate or do you try to find Steve Rossi? Or they've got Spriggs on the outside who's caught the out route all evening. Now let's see if they look for Rossi this time. To pick up the first down, the 33 and a half yard line. Caught for the first down at the 30-yard line. Kreitzberg was in motion. It just brought him on across into the flat, threw complete to him, and they will move the chains again. And that's why that penalty becomes very important. The mistake by Nevada again, given Toledo an extra chance, an extra down to get Brock Kreitzberg the reception number 84 for the first down. So again, a mistake by the Nevada defense. It's going to cost them. 
Another look, good catch. Brock Kreitzberg, good concentration. Straight ahead with the fullback, Engel, still fighting his way. He's going to wind up with a gain of nine yards in the play, and Yearwood and Canada had to combine to make the stop. It's just a little quick give to the fullback, but Eric Ingles on the linebacker so quickly because the linebackers are key in the tailback with Sean Tate. You see the ball is given so quickly. Jerry Christensen, 51, the left guard with a nice block, and Eric Ingles right into the secondary, second and one. 56 carries for 253 yards for that man during the regular season. Look at this on this drive, 11 plays. Just over four minutes they've consumed. Tate will have the first down as he takes the little quick step to the left and then back to the right inside the 20 yard line and they will move the chains again. We talked about Bashan Tate looking a little bit like Barry Sanders in his kind of running style, but when you look at his size, 5'8, 175, he's like a Dave Meggett also, who plays for New England now. Of course, had a great career with the Giants. A nice third down back out of the backfield for Bill Parcells, but Bashan uh, Tate's going to play in the NFL. He's got too many moves, he's got speed, he's got quickness, and he's got strength. That's a that's an interesting number, 43% of total offense for this ball club this year. And wind up with a gain of one this time. Lamont Porter gets off the bottom of the stack. Clock about to go under four minutes left in the third quarter. They're doing the same thing they did in the first quarter, Ron. That's right. Eating that clock and uh, keeping Nevada's offense on the sideline. It's a good drive, but Nevada has only themselves to blame on this drive for the offside penalty. Tate has a helmet problem, so that means Dwayne Harris, number one, checks into the lineup. Sophomore out of Columbus. They pitch it to him, and look what he can do. Touchdown to Harris. Again, credit Eric Engel with a block. Ron, any time out of the I formation that the tailback gets the quarter, you better find a tight end because Steve Rossi has to get the first block because that's the point of attack when you get the pitch outside. Dwayne Harris getting to the outside. There's Rossi, the tight end, number 82, allows him to get to the corner. Then Eric Engel has to pick up the force guy, whoever's going to force out of the defensive backfield, and he did that. Mark Spring looks for point number 28 for the Rockets. Well, he missed it. Wide left. Just take a timeout. Toledo 27, Nevada 17. We never used to exercise. Slept your last peaceful night, McGregor. She would give her soul. I think I have to tell you. For her, we will have him soon enough. He would give his life. I will think of you dead until my husband makes you so. United Artists Pictures presents Liam Neeson and 1994 Academy Award winner Jessica Lange. Rob Roy, rated R. You know, the Ford guys just sent me something. I wonder what they're up to now. Let's take a look. Oh, it's the new Taurus. Whoa. Oh, that's nice. Very nice. Oh, look at those lights. Wonder what they did to the inside. Oh, they put everything in one place. That's a great design. Everybody's gonna be copying this Taurus. Oh, there's a wagon. Saturday, it's a hoop lover's dream on ESPN. First at 4, Seton Hall takes on Ohio State in Columbus. Then at 7.30, Louisville heads south to battle Georgia Tech in the Jeep Eagle Classic. At 9.30, Cal battles Minnesota. In the nightcap, the Oregon Ducks take on Tark in Fresno State. A great day of college basketball, Saturday on ESPN. So Toledo leads by 10. Take a look at that touchdown run one more time. 
with good blocks by Rossi and Engel. Harris takes it in for the score. Now watch the sideline. This is Brian Jones, the running backs coach. See if he likes what his young running back did. Yes, you got it, you got it. <laughs> but I'm not sure he liked this. Good spot, good hold. And he just came over it. So it opens up the opportunity of an extra period, Mr. Godfrey. Well, Chris Fowler said he wanted to see overtime, so uh, when you get that 10 point spread, now it's possible. <laughs> He's in warm Bristol, Connecticut, too, watching this. <laughs> On the ground, this is going to be Ernie Wilson. Big opening. Gets outside at the 40, and Clarence Love stayed at home. Copier. Ron, on, you, on your kickoff, the times you'll put as your safety a corner, somebody who's used to guarding the goal line, and that's what Clarence Love is. He's a safety on this play. Now, you're going to see him come down. Now, this is a wedge, so once the back hits the wedge, he can break it. But see, number 26 is safety, Clarence Love. He's a sure tackler, and his job is not to allow that thing to break for a touchdown. He not only was sure of making the tackle, you could see the right hand. He was trying to knock the football out. Smart defensive back. Kim Miner, the long setback. See if Nevada can come back and put points on the board. Rolling the pocket, got a man wide open, and he misses McHenry, just threw it behind you. I, I think Brown, he slipped again on that uh, seal out there in the middle. NCAA Division One AA Championship, Montana 12 and 2 against Marshall 12 and 2. From Huntington, West Virginia, that's this Saturday at noon. Montana walloped Stephen F. Austin 70 to 14 last week to reach the finals. Marshall defeated McNeese State 25 to 13, and they will host the championship. Over the middle, got it complete, and that's McHenry again. And this one will have the first down. Ron, going back to the Division I AA championship game, it's at Marshall. Jim Donnan's done an outstanding coaching job there. But Montana has Dave Dickinson, an outstanding quarterback. And a lot of people compare it to Doug Flutie, and they feel like he's going to go in the Canadian League and have that same kind of career. Now, they scored 70 points in the semifinal game last week. You certainly got to pay attention to their offense. Ernie Wilson with the running play. Steve Haynes making the stop for Toledo. Talked about at the opening of the telecast the importance of Steve McHenry tonight, the tight end. And the play before Ron, it looked like he slipped right on that emblem, the Las Vegas bowl there in the middle of the field, which we've seen a lot of players slip on that. Yeah, they had. Three minutes, third quarter. Van Dyke at the 40-yard line. Not going to be enough for the first for the uh, first down. It'll be a third down. They need about three and a half as Jamal Belt came over to Belting. You know, when you, we've said Jamal Belt's name a lot tonight, as Alex Van Dyke is down, but. Jamel Belt came as a walk-on to Toledo, and you talk about an outstanding defensive back for the Rockets. Plays that corner position. See him on Alex Van Dyke. He's going to break. He knows Alex Van Dyke's going inside. He breaks on the ball and then makes the sure tackle. Well, Mike, they're looking at his ankle, but that almost looked like he got his knee caught underneath him. Let's hope not. The nation's leading receiver. Alex Van Dyke being tackled at the 35 and he is is still down. In fact you can see Chris Alt out on the field. Van Dyke has been had been a wonderful story as far as hard work and it's never come easy for him but he was at Sacramento in high school junior college and now playing for Nevada and Ron Charles Mann is the highest drafted Nevada player he was in the late second round a lot of people think Alex Van Dyke will go higher than that Bill Warndell from Orlads Joe Bushbaum uh, Mel Kuyper all those publications rate Alex Van Dyke right up there Eight catches 117 yards his longest 71 yards tonight and we'll get a report on him as you can see they had to carry him off the field movement by Toledo Maxwell goes with the quarterback sneak 
They're going to get him again, Ryan. That's again the center. Once he sees movement into the neutral zone, he'll snap that ball. Who was Jeff that, Richards? Jeff Hadwick did a nice job there, so he made up for the one. Let's see if we can see. Look like Jason Richards. Yeah, Ryan. you're right. Yeah, he came across just before the ball was Defense. snapped. Offside, five-yard penalty. First down. Now let's see if Nevada can take advantage of this five-yard penalty like. Toledo did on Nevada on the last drive and turned it into seven points. Of course, they turned it into six points. Van Dyke in the sideline being attended to by the training staff. This is where Cornell West and Damon Wilkins and Steve McHenry and Arthur Lloyd have to step it up. Also, Jeff Noisy, number four. He caught 17 during the regular season. Straight ahead, Miner with the running play. 30. Inside the 30, and he's in the vicinity of the 27. You know what's happened in the second half, Ron? As much too deep coverage as Toledo's playing, and when you I say too deep coverage, they move the corners on the outside receivers. They have to remove a linebacker to the three receiver set. So if you have three receivers, you move a linebacker out, and that gives a little bit of a bubble to the tight end. And that's where Nevada's been hurt in Toledo with the running game in the second half. Those corners are up tight to bump them this time in the pass to McHenry and he gets belted by Harris and he comes right back off the ground. He you wanted it. everybody to see I'm fine. I wasn't hurt. You're right. You got to like Steve McHenry because when you have a tight end who can run and the Steve McHenry can run and you see being held by Rob Whitfield number 19 but then the tackle by Mark Heron in the middle but he got right up solid tight end number 87 Steve McHenry. Right back to the line of scrimmage at the 15. McHenry now three catches for 43 yards. Maxwell looking for the end zone. That receiver fell down. He got up, went back to him, and it's complete to Noisy at the five-yard line. And he had slipped and fallen. Geoffrey Noisy makes this play because he didn't give up on his route. You're going to see Mike Maxwell come out on the outside. Now, when he's ready to throw, Geoffrey Noisy's down. He's covered. Now he's looking back, but Geoffrey Noisy never gave up on the route, got up, and then broke it back down inside, made a great catch. <laughs> Bennett in at quarterback, number 16. Noisy, by the way, only the freshman. He's from Irvine, California. We talked about Eric Bennett, Bennett all night. He can run the football in the quarterback position. Takes the counteraction. That's what he wants to do. And he'll run it in. Touchdown, Nevada. When Nevada loses Mike Maxwell, let me tell you something. They got an excellent quarterback in Eric Bennett. He can run, but he also can throw. He's thrown for 400 some yards in the two games he started. Good block by number 74, Brandon LeGraff, the left guard. But that's what makes it so dangerous, Ron. You get down there in that wing tee and your quarterback can run because everybody's concentrating on those two running backs, misdirection. Now you got to stay back if you're Jamal Belt. But there's not a pass receiver there. He just lost track of that. And Eric Bennett into the end zone for the touchdown. And you could see the defensive back giving a second glance back into the line of scrimmage saying, now, does he have it? Did he give it or, or what it, was it? Shea with the extra point of tip makes it good. I mean, that's what's all you have to go through. Is it, did he give it to him or does he have it? There's a lot of confusion in the misdirection. You see that misdirection? Fullback one way, tailback the other way, quarterback the other way. Now he's outside. He's gets inside the cone for the touchdown. 27 to 24, a three-point ball game. Well, NFL Sunday, 8 o'clock Eastern time, Oakland against Seattle at the Kingdom. Both teams fighting for their playoff lives. Raiders have lost four straight. The Seahawks have won five of their last six. Oakland, 8 and 6. Seattle, 7 and 7. 8 o'clock Eastern time on NFL Sunday. Every day. Harry Pinkle looking on and concerned because right now momentum seems to have shifted over to the Nevada side of the field. But what that man's offense has done, though, is the long drives have made Nevada sit over there and get cold again. Lofted kick, got to be picked up at the 23. That's Patton, and now he's broken it. One man back. And a flag down at the 30. That one's coming.
coming back, Ron. Late flag, but that one's coming back. Sylvester Patton, number 27. What Nevada did is they huddled up and tried to catch Toledo sleeping. And I'll tell you, Gary Pinko does not like that call. That's two of those calls on kickoff returns. What, when you have a split crew, you're looking for the guys you recognize and you want to talk to them. Illegal block in the back during the run back by the receiving team. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. You see the alignment by Nevada, First but down. when you do this, you really don't have the spread out coverage that you need, but the ball's going to hit the ground, which is a break for Nevada, but now they overrun everything. Sylvester Patton now breaks up inside. There's the block. He's, it's a good call. There's a block on number 35 of Toledo. That's an excellent call. Marlon Brisker. That's right. Good call by the referee. Mike Mayock, let's check with you quickly. Good news, Dallas Van Dyke and the Wolf Pack. Left ankle, not the knee, it's retaped, and he'll be back in the game next series. Okay, that is indeed good news. Tate breaks it up the middle. Look out at the 40, and he's going to take it close to the 45-yard line. 24 yards on the carry from scrimmage. I had a running back one time out of the University of Pittsburgh named Kervin Richards who went on to play at the Dallas Cowboys. But what Sean Tate reminds me of so much of his running style. Just keeps cutting down the field. Juan Givens, number 17, a cornerback, finally makes the tackle. I'll tell you what his major is going to be. That undeclared is going to turn into pro football after his senior year. 21 carries, 137 yards. Two touchdowns tonight. They fake the counter trade. And wide open over the middle is Kreitzberg at the 35 and down to the 31. What happens, Ryan Huziak, when you've got a great tailback, you play action, fake the run. All of a sudden, these linebackers are going to get caught up inside. Look at the direct. Stop it right there if you could. Stop it. Look at the linebackers right here and the other linebackers over here. They're both out of position. Now Brock Kreitzberg is going to come across the field behind the linebackers. We've got wide receivers clearing up. Great play called by Gary Pinkle and Mike Dunbar, the offensive coordinator. That is the end of the third quarter with our score. Toledo 27 and Nevada 24. You've got the honors. Maybe you'll realize it when you tee off against a background of shining resorts. A job. Or when you see dolphins in the desert. It could only happen here. Maybe you'll know it when the afternoon sun from high in an azure sky soaks relaxation into every pore of your body. This is the place. You'll know. Because your state of mind will tell you. Yeah. You're in a place unlike any other. You're with the press! I'm just a tourist. Explain this. It's just an Olympus for simple snapshots. Just an Olympus. Will you take me for an idiot? Everybody knows that Olympus is camera professional photographers use for personal I snapshots. Told you. Enough! Let us make it easy. Whose Olympus is that? It's mine. Just as I thought. <laughs> Shoot him. Long ago, man began renting cars only at airports, where thrifty car rental was first discovered. But in the future, man would need wheels for reasons that had nothing to do with flying. Thus, the dawn of neighborhood thrifty locations far and wide, assuring a practical, easy, and affordable way to rent a car, wherever you are and wherever you're going. Your neighborhood thrifty car rental, historically known for low rates.
Croatia will have many hundreds of television channels. Gee, mister, won't that be confusing? Not with this, a video guide. It'll let them see what's on 70 days into the future, or what's on right now. It'll give them instant news and sports scores. And with just one touch, they'll even be able to tape record their favorite television shows. Don't forget the tape. So what do you think they'd call this video guide? Video guide, under $100 at Radio Shack and other stores. Well, you're looking at a live picture on the sideline, and uh, that's not good news if you're a Nevada fan, because Alex Van Dyke, I'll show you the play that, that he got injured on. Got his leg caught up underneath him. Now, during that timeout, Mike, he tried desperately to run up and down the sideline after they have retaped. I'd be amazed if he was much of a factor in this ball game. Would you? No, I would, but he's moving around, so I figure he's going to get back in there and play. The more he moves, he may get some feeling in that thing and be back in the action. Engel gets the ball just inside the 26-yard line as Yearwood is there to put the stop on him. A more immediate concern to this Wolfpack team is stopping Toledo's offense. And I feel sure that, that Gary Pinkle, if he could do it, would take this thing in the end zone, everything on the ground, to burn as much clock as he can and also come up with the touchdown. For Chris Alt, he knows he's got to get a stop. As long as number 24 was Sean Tate's in that backfield, he's dangerous in every play. He's like Ted Williams. He can take it long anytime he steps up to bat. Chris Alt knows that. Good blocking by Kevin Montgomery, Jerry Christensen. Jerry Christensen had a really good Very good block, good block with Sean Tate. Just getting stronger and stronger. And that's what uh, Toledo felt like in the first game. They felt like their offensive line wore down the defensive line in Nevada. And uh, Mike Mayock talked about how this offensive line feels like. Hey, they just stay together. There's not a lot of names on that offensive line. But they just keep working at it. Offensive line coach Dave Christensen done a nice job with that offensive line. by spring is good. So let's take a break. 14-17 left in our ball game. Toledo back on top by 10. Look, maybe it'll happen when you see the lights shimmering on the horizon. Beautiful. Or the first time you enter a world you thought could only exist in a dream, but you're wide awake. Maybe it's when you realize you don't know if it's 2 p.m. or 2 a.m. <laughs> and furthermore, you don't care. This is the place. But when it does happen, you'll know. Yeah. Because your heart, your mind, your senses will tell you. Aren't you glad you came? You're in a place unlike any other. There are all kinds of reasons we created Ford Windstar with over 40 standard safety features like dual airbags and anti-lock brakes. Reasons it has the government's highest front crash test rating and offers a more powerful V6 engine than any other minivan. We did all this for a lot of different reasons and some identical ones. Introducing the 1996 Ford Windstar, created for the most important people in the world. Natural ability can only take you so far. Equipment counts for a lot. I'm always checking out new ideas. You have to to stay competitive. That's what I like about Pert Plus. Cleans and conditions in one step. No messing with two bottles. I get great results. No hassle, no fuss. Eventually, we all cross the finish. The winners just find a better way to get there. Pert Plus, great hair, no fuss. Las Vegas Bowl is presented by Las Vegas. It's non-stop action around the clock, and we're open 24 hours. And in part by the all-new Ford Windstar. The future of minivans begins today. Well, a great look at the uh, city of Las Vegas. You have to wonder, on a per capita basis, if the electric company out here doesn't deal out more electricity than any city in the world. Hoover Dam's going dry. <laughs> 
Four plays, 80 yards. He only used a minute and 32 seconds. I'm sure that Gary will take it any way he can. Spring kicks it off. Galloway, he will take it close to the 30-yard line. What makes the counter play tough is this. First of all, you're going to get misdirection by the fullback, and then you're going to get good blocks on this side, which is going to seal that side of the line. Now watch it here as you get the fake. The fullback goes up inside. Now you hold the linebackers with a counter. Stop it right here. Now they're both backside. This is the right tackle pulling the backside Montgomery, and he's going to lead around the corner for Washon Tate. And you got that big tackle. Leading on the outside, you get a good block from the wide receiver. Rashawn Tate in the end zone. Maxwell to throw on first down. Near sideline, there's Van Dyke. Back in the ball game, and he makes the reception. It pushed out just across the 40-yard line. Folks, that is a gutsy performance because he is limping and what, noticeably. And you're right, Ron. And what you may have to do now if you're Toledo is to just roll up on him a little bit because now he doesn't have the speed to go deep on you. He's going to be a possession-type receiver from this point on because I don't think he can run well enough to run by the corner. Love that finally finished him off. Marcus Matthews got enough of a piece of him to knock him off balance. Ron, I'm not sure, uh, again, on Alex Van Dyke as you watch him. He missed a block on that play, too. Sometimes you can hurt your team by playing when you're not full speed. And uh, he just was not able to pick up the block there. We'll see how he does the rest of the game. But sometimes you can be a, a you can hurt your ball club. Lots and lots of time. And wisely gets out of bounds just across midfield, close to the first down as Baskin and uh, Jamie Johnson forced him out. Now, Alex Van Dyke was open on this play, but you're going to watch him here limping down the field on his route. Gets good, a uh, good cushion from Clarence Love, but you see him limping a little bit. Now he sits it down. Now he's open because they're really giving him some room, but he just can't run. Uh, I think if I was Toledo, I'd roll up on his side, just put somebody on his nose a little bit and make him work to get off the line of scrimmage. Got the ball. Well, Eric Bennett has uh, come into the ball game at quarterback. He's going to have a measurement right over at the Nevada bench. And now Coach Alt has called both quarterbacks together. What he was thinking about with uh, the backup quarterback was the short yardage team. Mike Mike Maxwell out, Eric Bennett in on short yardage, but they picked up the first down, so Maxwell's back on the field. Okay, number seven, Maxwell comes back out. It's going to be an interesting matchup. Clarence Love versus Alex Van Dyke. Now, this will be worth watching here. This time, and the pass thrown behind Wilkins. As you talk about a smart quarterback, Mike Maxwell picked up the blitz by Marcus Matthews on the outside. And you have to have an outlet receiver on the blitz. He went right to Damon Wilkins, just didn't throw it well enough, but picked up the blitz. Number 30, Marcus Matthews on the blitz. Good reaction by Mike Maxwell, just didn't get the ball to Damon Wilkins. To the middle, it's Van Dyke. And he will take it almost to the 45. Joey Jones came over to make the tackle on him. Don't think he has the speed again to break that play either, Ron. He broke it early in the ball game, but I don't think he can do it right now. Motion hits the little quick screen, picks up some good blockings. Joy, uh, blocking Joy Jones made the tackle. One of Dave Steckel's defensive linemen, the defensive line coach of Toledo. Third down, they need about seven. Corner blitz is coming as a flag is down, and there's Van Dyke. And he will step out of bounds into 23, and I believe this is going to be offside against Clarence Love on that corner blitz. And yeah, they brought the corner into the short side of the field, and Alex Van Dyke yelled at Mike Maxwell. Good thing about this, with the crowd here, he was able to hear it. 
28 yards on the pass play. Defense, offside, penalty is declined. First down. Ron, you don't you don't want to show the blitz, but here is number 26, Clarence Love. Now that means the safety has to come over and cover him, and he's late covering him. Alex Van Dyke waving his hands and everything else. Now breaking up field. That was Bob Rob Whitfield that tried to get over to cover him, but again, without the speed to break him, but he's still playing pretty good on one leg. I'm telling you. Screen is dropped by Cornell West. He jumped up trying to catch the ball so he wouldn't have to extend and expose his body. And when he did that, went through his hands and hit his shoulder pad. Cornell West did just that. He didn't concentrate on the football from Mike Maxwell. He drops this football. I think it's Steve McHenry time here. Now let's look for number 87. Up, swings it out, went to minor, and he just missed him. But that was not a minor miss. I mean, he, he missed him badly. Chris Ald is also the athletic director at Nevada. Dual role as the head football coach as Mike Maxwell overthrows Ken Minor. Third down, 10. The line to make is the 11 yard line. Safety boundaries wide open. Inside the 15 well, and down to the 10 yard the line. Minor. And that by Miner, he's got to be enough for the first down. Whitfield finally rode him out of bounds. That's exactly what they tried to do the play well, before yeah. and just overthrew it. But Mike Maxwell getting the blitz again. Coming from the outside, Aristotle Wilson. He dumps the ball off to Ken Miner. There's no underneath coverage there. Rob Whitfield making the tackle. First and goal. The ball just inside the 10. Look at the total offense. 456 to 366. There's that middle screen at Van Dyke that time. It's going to be tackled for a three-yard loss. Damon Walker, defensive lineman, read the quick screen in his initial move. He went into the offensive guard, and then he went right out and made the tackle on Alex Van Dyke. The quick screen, number 90, Damon Walker. Look at him. He just reads it right away, and he's right there to make the tackle on Alex Van Dyke. Maxwell on second down goes for the end zone. Caught it for the touchdown. Nope, they're going to say at the one foot line. What happened to Clarence Love is here. He made contact with Alex Van Dyke, and then he lost the football. As a corner, you got to get your head around as quickly as you can and read the eyes of the wide receiver. <laughs> Alex Van Dyke is using his hands well, but you see Clarence Love just loses his position on the field, turned away from the receiver and lost and created some space there. Alex Van Dyke with a catch on the one-yard line. Then up the quarterback and he's going with the running play and Miner will score the touchdown. And now a flag has been thrown in the end zone. I think McHenry and Matthews got into it about something. I'm amazed at how Alex Van Dyke is playing on a leg and a half and making such an impact in this ball game. So a mistake by Toledo here scored the touchdown and then a face mask called against the Rockets. Chris Alt when he was in Division one double A he's now in Division one but he ran the wing T and then he opened it up in his later coaching years into a passing attack team but he still goes to the wing T in short yardage situations. So that penalty will be enforced on the kickoff, which means I'm going to kick it off from what the 50 yard line. Did he? I couldn't hear. Did he say personal foul? Ball is 
down, and the kick is good. So let's take a break. 11:51 left in our ball game. 34 to 31, Toledo. Car rental was born at the airport. Not long after man's first flight arrived. But soon, man discovered reasons to rent that had nothing to do with flying. That's when thrifty car rental got rolling right in the neighborhood. Such convenience has made thrifty's historically low rates a way of life, whether or not you happen to be flying. Your neighborhood thrifty car rental, historically known for low rates. You've got the honors. Maybe you'll realize it when you tee off against a background of shining resorts. Good job. Or when you see dolphins in the desert, it could only happen here. Maybe you'll know it when the afternoon sun from high in an azure sky soaks relaxation into every pore of your body. This is the place. You'll know because your state of mind will tell you. Yeah. You're in a place unlike any other. Ford introduces the all-new Taurus. For those who see life as a journey and want to enjoy the ride, its speed-sensitive steering and responsive new suspension help you take new roads with confidence. While the powerful new 24-valve Duratec engine can go up to 100,000 miles between recommended tune-ups, which means you can go as far as your dreams. The all-new Ford Taurus. when you lead the nation in receiving, you obviously uh, have the attention of your teammates. But in this case, this fella coming back and playing hurt, I think he was the inspiration on the drive. I think he's inspired his football team. And the other thing is he's showing a, a, an awful lot of toughness in this ball game. You look for receivers who catch the ball over the middle, and, you, and here's a guy, that Alex Van Dyke, that's playing hurt tonight and playing very well. And you can notice, and you see him, he's noticeably limping when he runs routes. Van Dyke now with the Las Vegas Bowl record, 13 catches for 165 yards. And for Toledo, well, they got to just take it and move it down the field. This, this kick's going to come from the 50-yard line because of the personal foul. And they are lined up looking for a pooch kick here. Well, the ball, you, what you want here is just a high kick, and you hopefully it can hit the hit the uh, turf a little bit but gonna kick in the end zone now this is Patton and he makes a mistake he's going to return it wow. that's one that Gary Pinko is going to be looking for Sylvester Patton for to ask him why he brought that ball out of the end zone because one of the things that this man's football team has been labeled with this year is they play smart football. And they don't make mistakes. This is a mistake by Sylvester Patton because now you put your deep, you put your offense inside the 10-yard line. Now they got to pick up an additional first down to get the ball down the field. Toledo drives tonight. Six plays, 42 yards for a touchdown. Ten plays and 76 yards. Seven plays and 89 yards. 16 plays and 79 and four plays, 80 yards. Make the ball there, Mike, the dangerous thing about this, as you watch uh, Tate take it for about a four-yard gain, if you're a Nevada fan, taking it this deep, this is an area for a patented 16-play drive, which they can use up six or seven minutes. I think you're going to see Nevada just kind of give a little bit here, blitz some linebackers here, and try to set the tempo of this ball game. There's 11.20 to go on this clock, and I think you're looking at the game right here and this drive. They cannot afford them to be able to drive the ball into their area and give them back to football. So I think you'll see defensive coordinator Mike Gilhammer give some stunts here. The ball is fumbled. Take the football on the field. Still loose. Nevada football. Twan Hall has it. We talked about it. The first game. Toledo was the beneficiary of six turnovers in that ball game from Nevada. Won that football game. You look at that graphic right there, it tells you the whole story. Nevada, no turnovers tonight in this bowl game with Sean Tate. I don't know if he ever got the football. It looked like it was it never got to him in the poor handoff right there. Tawan Hall with the uh, fumble recovery, and you're going to see the backup quarterback again. 
Eric Bennett, the sophomore out of Simi Valley, California, brings him up. First and goal for Nevada. Play action. Got a man wide open, and he waited too long to throw the pass to McHenry. And McHenry came down on the paved surface just out of the back of the end zone. Ron, I like that call. I tell you, that call sets a message to that Toledo defense. Good play action fake. They've had success pounding it in, the quarterback. And I think he really just kind of threw this ball away a little bit because there's pretty good coverage by Clarence Love. Now you come back, you can try to pound it one play. Going to be knocked down for a loss at the five yard line. It will be third down and goal. This is a play now where you want to get Eric Bennett outside. But Ron, go, let's go back. Two mistakes. The mistake by Patton returning the kickoff to the 10 yard line, which gave Toledo bad field position. And the fumble by Washon Tate. So two big mistakes have set up this Nevada score if they can get it in the end zone. Look for something here where they move Eric Bennett out of the pocket. Still jumping around on defense. Meyer wants to throw. Park Hill is going to be credited with the stop. Jamie Johnson is the one who got it going the wrong way. Trying to trick him. Uh, Toledo defense very sound reading their keys Miner doesn't really have any place to go Jamie Johnson makes the play but Ron you still set the field goal up and guess what if they make this field goal we're tied 26 yard attempt high pass but he gets it down and the kick is up and we are tied at 34. Hey, Mike, if we can look at that replay one more time, Toledo was extremely fortunate. That play was down, and there was a late hit that they didn't get called for. Definitely saw that. Uh, that's a possibility. I still like the play calls by Chris Alt down here because he knew he had the field goal situation. I'm not so sure about the halfback pass, but uh, Watch it was the well hit. covered. Watch the hit. He goes down right here. I think it's Joy Jones coming in there, 91. They were very fortunate that that was not a first down because of a personal foul. Well, you go back, add one more play. I talked about the kickoff return by Patton where he came out to 10, then the fumble, but then the mistake in the end zone, which allowed uh, Nevada to kick off in the 50 yard line. So three mistakes and three plays cost Toledo to get to this point where we're tied. That's Dave Steckel, the defensive coordinator, defensive line coach. Uh, he's the brother of Les Steckel, who uh, coaches the head, former head coach of the Silver Vikings. And, uh, with the Oilers, a very fine football coach, fine person. Shea's going to kick it off. He's going to be Pat from the 10. Across the 30 and out to the 33, and no bad field position on this one. But if you just joined us, how key is this play? This is just earlier. Toledo misses an extra point, and right now the scoreboard shows Toledo 34 and Nevada 34. Well, I think Chris Fowler put the whammy on this game, though, because he <laughs> said he wanted to see an overtime. He better not have. And of course, the thing for Toledo, they have moved the football all night long. So what they got to do is just start doing what they've done well all night, and that is get the offense going. That's Kreitzberg close to the first down as he is shoved back, but they'll give him forward progress to the 42 and a half. Ron, on that last formation when Toledo came out of the huddle and lined up, you're going to see how tight. We can't really tell, but how tight was Sean Tate is. He's only about four yards deep, which means it's going to be a pass. And that's what happened. Mike Crawford knew it was going to be a pass, tried to call it off, but he couldn't get anybody out to cover Brock Kreitzberg in the quick three-step route. Not quite enough for the first down, so it's second down and short. Tate, left side. Now they stop him after one, but he'll have the first down. 
Vaughn Hall, the junior out of Los Angeles, is there. This is going to be close, Ron, where they where they oh, spot that. Oh, you're right. He didn't, he didn't get a real good spot. He may not have gotten the best spot in the world. Eight minutes, 32 seconds left in our ball game. The Las Vegas ball number four. If you look at Chris Alt pacing the sideline. They're in a big building project over in Nevada also, Ron. They're having a $3 million project that they're adding uh, luxury boxes to the press box. That'll give them 56 luxury boxes, which is going to help them fund uh, gender equity there. But we talk about a good program. 24,000 people, they average at their home games. And I think this would be a team that the WAC would be interested in because uh, they, they've got a fine program. Bill Foster's the basketball coach over there. And uh, Chris Alston, just a remarkable job in Nevada. Pat Foster. Pat Foster, right, yeah. Pat Foster. Formerly Houston, right? Yep. Toledo, 7 of 12 on third down conversions. Quarterback Sneak and Hujak fighting his way forward. David Miller is down at the bottom of that stack. With two different approaches to this game. I think Toledo approached it like a bowl game. Uh, coming out here, most of their kids have not ever been out to Las Vegas. But Nevada's used this as just another ball game. They're used to this kind of scene there at Reno and uh, and then Nevada, Las Vegas here. Uh, so he came in late. He's going to leave right after the game. So this is just an extra ball game for Chris Alton. That's the way his team's looking at it with finals tomorrow morning. So it is the first down. Shift up so literally no one behind Hujak and the pass out in the flat is complete to Brunswick. He's good for about four. That was a check off all the way by Ryan Hujak. Saw the blitz was coming, saw the coverage he wanted. He was going to go right now to Scott Brunswick, number two, the inside receiver with Sean Tate moved up to block the extra rush. And there's just a quick throw for the four yard gain. It out. Here's Tate, 45, 50, and he is going to have the first down at the 45-yard line as Lamont Porter got out there to make the stop on it. Ron, there's been some calls of going both ways, but I'll tell you, they missed a clip there on uh, Toledo on that play with Washon Tate. I don't know if we'll pick it up here, but you're going to see the quick throw out to Washon Tate. And there's going to be a clip downfield here. Yeah, it's already happened there. Steve Rossi in the back, and it didn't get called, so Toledo caught a break on that play. Let's go, Steve David Miller has to come out of the game. Justin Tenpenny comes back in at defensive tackle. Tries to bounce it outside, and he'll be corralled at the line of scrimmage. Hassan and Porter combining on the stop. What the defensive linemen did on that play, Ron, they stayed okay. parallel to the line of scrimmage. They didn't get turned. They didn't get their shoulders turned. And they made this football bounce all the way outside. And when you can bounce him outside with Sean Tate, then you get some help from Lamont Porter, the inside linebacker. That was a very nice job by the defensive front of Nevada and Wolfpack. Mike, you talked about the importance of this drive. Look, we're about to go under six minutes left in this ball game, and Toledo right now has got it going the way they want it. Pass is caught by Rossi. Not enough for the first down. Ball is loose. Yes, they caught fumble. Toledo, Mike Crawford has recovered, and Toledo thought the play was dead. Stole it right out of his hands, I believe. Mike Crawford. The linebacker working against Steve Rossi made the catch, and I think Mike Crawford just pulled it away from him. Four turnovers for the Rockets. Catch by Rossi. Now let's see what happens. Here comes number 46, Mike Crawford. Now he dropped the football, and he pulled it away underneath the pile. Four times Toledo has fumbled tonight, and they've lost three of them. I don't think Garrett Pinkle's going to send a Christmas card to these officials. I think he's felt like it's been some tough calls of going against him tonight. 
defense was pass too low that uh, bounced on the ground. And Cornell West is the man that he wanted. And I mean, Toledo had it going just the way they wanted as far as burning clock and moving down the field, keeping the Nevada offense on the sideline. Tis the season for giving, but Toledo has given four turnovers up to this Nevada Wolfpack team. Here's the fumble, and the 46 Crawford with the recovery, and uh, Nevada's going the other direction. Yeah, well, that ball definitely came out. I don't think there's any question about that. Toledo crowd has given them one for Maxwell just throws that one away. Now, Ron, this is the same play that Alex Van Dyke had the, the last time when he gained all that yardage. They brought the corner again on the back side. Mike Maxwell reads it, but all of a sudden now the, the linebacker got over there to cover it, so Mike Maxwell did the right thing, threw it in the stands. Any play. Nevada, 7 to 13 on third down conversion. 7 to 13. And here comes the all out blitz. And deep over the middle, incomplete. He wanted Wilkins, but he just had to get rid of it too quickly. Credit Tom Amstutz, the okay. defensive coordinator again. He's heating up Mike Maxwell with a lot of different blitzes. That was a corner blitz again by Clarence Love. Steve McHenry, the tight end, just ran by the linebacker. He's open, but uh, Mike Maxwell didn't have time didn't to have find time. Steve McHenry. Nope, he didn't because Wilson and Joey Jones were really coming after him. Jason McLean's really put his foot into the football tonight. Let's see if he can get another good kick for Nevada. He's kicking into a little bit of a breeze this time, but it doesn't matter. This is a dandy, dandy kick. Freeman, good. Heavens, what a hit. Special team coverage was excellent. So let's take a break. 53 yards and a kick and only three on the return. Hey, you guys. Office politics got you down. You repeat this order or I'll find somebody who will. Feel like no one listens to you. I say again, I, leave. I you order you to place the command. Echo. A little tense, are we? Hey. At least your boss hasn't got a bunch of nuclear missiles. See Crimson Tide. Full of the chair as TCI is bringing it home on pay-per-view. Get the Montgomery Ward for $500 million in price cuts. At Electric Avenue, it's all on sale with great gift ideas like a 19-inch TV or a VCR with Universal Remote for only $149. Get a 25-inch TV or a Hi-Fi VCR with VCR Plus for just $219. Home audio's on sale, like this Sony mini shelf system for only $242. Plus, get zero interest for a full year on Electronics $299 and up. And get free delivery on all appliances $349 and up. The $500 million price cuts this holiday season at Electric Avenue, Montgomery Ward. It was the week after Christmas when all through the house now the TV was silent, no sign of a spouse. Frisky car rental bowl week had begun. There were whistles to blow, yellow flags to be flung. Now lions, now falcons, now tigers and rams. On pirates, on wildcats, red raiders and cabs. For the best college bowl games, it's easy, my friend. The week after Christmas on ESPN. Frisky car rental bowl week. Coverage begins December 27th on ESPN. Saturday at ESPN, 6'9", Samaki Walker and 20th ranked Louisville come after number 19, Georgia Tech, and super freshman Stefan Marbury in the Jeep Eagle Classic at 7.30. It's one of four games tipped off by Seton Hall at Ohio State at 4. At 9.30, it's California and Minnesota, followed by Oregon, Fresno State at midnight. Well, all the bad on Saturday, but right here, we told you we were going to have action. <laughs> We've had it all night. Well, Ron, you think we're going to, we're headed for overtime here? We're no. setting uh, the no. history tonight with the first overtime game? No, I refuse to let Fowler jinx us. Hand up, this is Ingle. He gets tagged. Boy, there is some hitting going on. That is Deshaun Miles, the all conference linebacker who comes up to make the tackle and watch this one from behind. To talk about Deshaun Miles, we talked about Alex Van Dyke playing injured. Here's a guy that had an appendectomy and has come back, practiced two days this week, and is playing in this football game. Lights out. He almost performed his own on that one. <laughs> yeah, that pass got away from Hujak. 
Incomplete. Julian Yearwood made that get away from Ryan Hujak because he had his hands in the face of the quarterback. I don't know, Ron. I'll tell you one thing. I think Mike Mayock's going to have to get his rules ready for this uh, overtime. You know, the interesting thing about how close these two football teams are, the first time they played, final score was 49 to 35, but Toledo got two touchdowns from their defense. We're tied at 34 now. Offensively, without a lot of defensive help, these teams are virtually even, aren't they? Well, dead even. Two good, solid football teams. Third down. They need the 27. Hujak drills his pass, and Rossi made the catch at the 45, plus the fact pass interference, I believe, is going to be called. I think you're right. James Johnson had his hands all over Steve Rossi. 26 yards. Obviously, you're going to take this play because Steve Rossi with the route. You see the hands being James Johnson all over him and still couldn't keep Steve Rossi from making that catch. Ryan Husak is really good when he gets outside that pocket. I mean, he can make things happen. Really, he really can. And Mike, one of the things that Nevada has kind of taken away in the second half is what what Hujak can do so well. And if they get him involved as far as rolling that pocket, I think it presents far more problem for the defense. They fake the counter trail. Hujak's gonna run. We got one flag. We got two flags. Ron, this one's gonna be against Toledo. This is gonna be a big penalty, especially if it's holding on Pete Stone, the center. Holding or clip one of the two because as we discussed with the officials yesterday, he was it's gonna be a illegal block in the back. You see the play here, the fake to was Sean Tate. Ryan, there's the block by number 63, Pete Stone. Good call again. Officials are right on top of it. But this is from the point of the infraction as well, Mike. So this winds up being a monster penalty. Illegal block in the back by the offense. That's a 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. They got to go to hoop. First down. They're going to go all the way to the 46-yard line, and the line of scrimmage is the 24, and that is the Nevada 46. Four minutes, 32 seconds left in the ball game. Nevada 34 and Toledo 34. This might be a good time for a draw right here. You just want to get a little of it back right now, not force the ball in and get an interception. That's exactly what they call. Trying to spring Tate, and he'll go for three yards. Yearwood and Porter combining on him. See, here's where both coaches now. I'll tell you, benefit is Chris Porter Alton. Now, he Yearwood. probably has a little bit of an edge here because he was in Division I AA, so he knows the overtime process. Gary Pinkle, I don't believe, has ever been in Division I AA came out of Washington so uh, now both teams now have to start thinking about strategy a little bit with 359 on the clock you got to start thinking a little bit about the strategy in the overtime process Chris Alt again haven't been in Division One double A ought to give him a leg up now Toledo says we got 347 left to keep that from happening Pujak deep over the middle incomplete Mike Mayock, let's check in with you down on the sideline. Thanks, Ron. You know, Mike Godfrey just made a great point about the overtime and Chris Alt. Don't forget, Chris Alt had eight overtime games. He was five and three. Coin toss, the winner may not defer. Offense or defense, the possession starts on the 25-yard line, and the key is the game will continue in consecutive overtime periods until each team has an equal number of possessions and one team wins. And simply put, you really don't want to win the toss because if you hold on the very first series, you come back and score games over. Toledo on third down. They throw the screen and it is incomplete. That was Porter and Mike. If he hadn't tried for the big hit, I thought he could have intercepted the he ball. Had a chance, Ron. You're right. Lamont Porter was going, to the, but you have to realize where Sean Tate was on the other end of that, so he had to make sure he took him down. 
this play uh, again is a bust from the start because you're in such long yardage situations. Lamont Porter making the play on with Sean Tate, but the penalty really hurt Toledo. Again, this is a team that didn't get penalized, didn't have turnovers all year, have hurt themselves all evening. This is only the second punt, and it's off the side of his foot. Fair catch is called for and made at the 36-yard line. That's only 37 yards, and now Nevada gets the football. 326 left. That's a lot of time for this offense. And everything's in their favor right now. And again, you've got to talk about the gutty performance by Alex Van Dyke, the wide receiver who continues to play on one leg. He's got a sprained ankle and is continuing out there to play. And uh, Mike, right now, he looks like he's got new life right now. He's just regenerated. The other thing to keep in mind is uh, Damon Shea, the field goal kicker. What's his longest? 38 yards this year. Kim Miner on the carry. And he'll take it to the 40. Clock runs with 319 and now 318. Yeah, I want to see overtime now. I mean, we might as well see it now. As you're down to three. 11 people in bars all over the country. They're going to think when this oh, regulation ends, it ends because they can't hear us. They'll think they had one too many to drink when we keep playing here. Under three minutes left in the ball game. Tied at 34. Draw play. Miner squeezes through a little hole. Takes it to the 43 yard line. Joey Jones puts the stop on him, and now it's third down. Big play here for Chris Alt because he wants to keep the ball again. He needs to make that first down. Toledo on the other side. Tom Amstutz has done a great job tonight with a defensive plan. Wants to get that ball back for his offense. Both teams still got Toledo's got three timeouts, Nevada's got two. Damon Shea on the sideline. Looks out at his club, who is 7 of 13 on third down conversions. Pressure is on, and the pass over the middle, and it's because of Craig Dews coming up the middle and forcing the pass that Nevada's going to have to pump the football away. Had to be a bust somewhere, and by the reaction of Bob Cooper, the guard, he didn't pick it up. You see number 63. He didn't pick up Craig Dews, number 36. He missed the blocking scheme, and Mike Maxwell had to throw the ball away. Jason McLean, he's been very valuable tonight. He's been a solid punter for Nevada. Now the left footer spins this one out, hits at the 20, now takes a huge Nevada bounce and is picked up and taken to the 12 yard line by Mace Freeman. Wow. That was a questionable <laughs> move again, but. I tell you, if we had a player of the game tonight, I might vote Jason McLean there because of what he's done for his football team in field position, punting the football. Mace Freeman, number 29, is going to pick it up. Pick up a couple yards, but still good field position now for the Nevada defense. 52 yards on the kick and eight on the return. Gary Pinkle's heart had to stop. He had six blue jerseys around him. Well, a minute, 57 seconds left in regulation of our ballgame. If we're tied at 34 at the end, we're going to overtime. Tate in the flat, complete to the 20-yard line. And they're going to say he did not get out of bounds. Clock will continue to run. And we talked about the longest field goal for Nevada being 38, the longest for Mark Spring of Toledo, 42 yards. Flag is down. No play, it would appear. Whatever Sports Center is next, whatever next is, if we, whether it's end of this ball game or overtime or what, anyway, those guys are standing by, and I'm sure they enjoyed your warm wishes of wanting overtime since back in the East. It's uh, on the offense, five yard penalty, previous spot, repeat, second down. 
That's Mike Dunbar, the offensive coordinator. Knows now he don't want to make a mistake down here either with 1.33 on the clock. That's nine penalties for 84 yards against Toledo. Quarterback draw maybe again, Ryan Huzak. Yep. I like that call. Good call. Good safe call. David Miller on the stop. Now Toledo looking at a situation where they need about a yard and a half to pick up the first down. 117. Clock runs at 116. Tate goes left side. I believe he's going to have the first down from where they yep from where they're marking it. Ron, what this game will do tonight to all the coaches who are watching tonight that are going to be in bowl games to all start practicing the overtime situation a little bit more because now they see it can happen uh, if, it, if it indeed happens. But even if it, if it doesn't happen, you've got to practice that and spend some time with it. Can you imagine the Florida-Nebraska game going into overtime? <laughs> it could be that close, yeah. 60 seconds left in our ball game in regulation time. Toledo, an undefeated football team. They want to stay that way. Mm -hmm. And you know something that's very important to them as well is, and Steve Rossi said to the crowd yesterday, for the respect of their team and the conference, they're in the top 25. They're number 25 according to the Associated Press right now, and they want real badly to, to finish in the top 25 this year. Hushak goes to the far sideline as they have taken a timeout, so we'll take it with them. Tied at 34, we'll be back to Las Vegas shortly. Every few years, the world gathers to witness an unparalleled sports spectacle, the Truckathlon. Yeah! And to compete, you have to have a Ford Ranger 4x4, because you'll need it switch on four-wheel drive for truck long jump. It's four-wheel anti-lock brakes for truck discus. And it's whopping four liter V6 for truck hurdles. The Ford Ranger 4x4. You can't win without one. Next event, truck pole vault. Yes! Santa, I've uh, had another job offer. Oh no. How can we change your mind? How about a raise? Mmm. Company sled? No one can resist Long John Silver's popcorn fish or new country style popcorn shrimp. A quarter pound with fries is just $1.99. Maybe if you gave me your popcorn fish. Keep in touch, kid. Right now, collect a holiday crystal for just 99 cents each. Hello from Plank Road, where our man Paul has a special guest today, Rudy from the Ice Ring. Hey, Ma! When it comes to making smooth ice, Rudy's an expert. So we thought we'd let him sample our ice house. It's always ice brewed, so there's never any watered down taste, just more of what you want in a beer. Rudy? Tastes like I run over it myself. Smooth. <laughs> there you have it. Ice house is as smooth as it gets. Thanks and enjoy. Join Northwest Airlines and Toys for Tots to make wishes come true this holiday season. Some people just know how to fly. Now some anxious players on both sides of the field. Toledo 34 and Nevada 34. Nevada has never led in this ball game, but we've been tied twice at seven apiece and now here at 34 all. just throws it away. That was Lorenzo who was holding on to him. Ron, if I'm, if I'm Nevada, I may use my timeouts. If I'm Toledo, I don't want to use mine right now. Aaron Lozano making the player number 44, putting the rush on Ryan Luziak. But we talk about overtime possibility, and I like the fact that we're going to have a winner, but I don't like the format of overtime. I like the NFL way better. You kick it off and you play to the first team scores. I don't like this setup, but I do think it's a step in the right direction. Third down. Pujak. He's going to rush it out of bounds just around the 30-yard line. If I was Nevada, I'd use my timeout right now. They did block a kick in the first game. They blocked a punt. 
Well, he didn't get out of bounds, and the clock continues to run. Now it's been stopped at 32 seconds. And Nevada's using a timeout. Ryan Huzak down with his left knee, and the clock keeps moving. But remember, again, they did block a punt in the first game, so this is an excellent opportunity to go after one. So Nevada calls a timeout. 32 ticks left on the clock. Two timeouts, Toledo, one for Nevada. Right now, you're playing more defensively than, than you are to, almost too late to be aggressive, with the exception of what you talked about coming after the, the punter. Well, the, the one thing you have to worry about, Chris Alt has to remind his team, is you don't want to be off sides on the punt rush because they've only got four yards to go for the first down. So you don't want to give them that with 32 seconds to go. But I've always believed you go after it. You play very recklessly to go after this thing. And I think Chris Alt will go after this punt. Four Toledo turnovers tonight. Nevada had six the first time they played. They won it by 14. You look at Tate, his numbers, 166 yards, three touchdowns. Van Dyke, 13 catches, 165 yards. Good waits for the snap back at the 18. Nevada has got a little outside pressure, but they got the return on. Fair catch has been signaled for and made at the 33 by Gibbons. So a 35-yard kick. Mike, what do you do if you're Chris Alt right here? Well, I think if I was Chris Alt, I'd play for overtime right now. I may try to throw something safe right now. In other words, don't make a mistake. No, I don't want to make a mistake right now. And I'm playing for overtime, but I still got one timeout and 26 seconds to go. I'd like to get in a position to kick this field goal, but I don't want to give anything to Toledo here. First man to get there and make the hit, and that should be the last play of regulation unless somebody calls a timeout. Nevada's going to use their yep. last timeout. Good call by Chris Alt. So let's take a break. 14 seconds left of the ball game. We'll be right back. Think, Howie. Why is your throat? You cough. <laughs> Your fever will feel worse because it's nighttime and you can dwell on it. Take what you use during the day. <coughs> You'll still be up all night coughing. Your speech will bomb at the convention. Nighttime is no time for a one or two symptom medicine you take during the day. Room service? Do you have any NyQuil? The corner drugstore? With Vicks NyQuil, the nighttime sniffling, sneezing, coughing, aching, stuffy head fever so you can rest medicine, the difference is night and day. Reengineering results in a paradigm shift in the corporate matrix. What? Thus facilitating Experiencing system overload. We're going to crash. Better click on Office Max. The office product superstore, electronics, computers, software, with great brand names like Brother or Mobilecom. At guaranteed low prices, it will re-engineer your budget. You can even shop online. Get the latest business technology without even shifting your paradigm. Whatever that means. Office Max. We go to the max. Toledo 34 and Nevada 34. 14 seconds left in regulation. And we are going to have a situation, as we have mentioned to you, that first time that it's happened, uh, the new NCAA rule. Well, coming up immediately after our ball game, Sports Center, Bulls go for eight straight, Major League Baseball free agent signings, and Pro Bowl selections. Ron, one thing you could do here if you're Chris Alt, heavy protection and just hang it out. Just to get one receiver route or two receiver route and try to throw the ball downfield as far as you can. But make sure you protect it. I'm not so sure you won't come back with a draw. at middle screen at Van Dyke. Six seconds. Good safe call on the quick screen to Alex Van Dyke. Got time for one play if they get set up. 
Now they're moving the chains. Center, center, guys, center. Now they wind it back in. Four seconds down to three. Going to go on top and incomplete, and we are heading to overtime. At the end of regulation, Toledo 34 and Nevada 34. Dear Midas, my wife's brake light had been flashing on, so we took the car to a repair shop. They failed to properly inspect the brakes and solve the problem. Then we took the car to Midas, rested a proper inspection, and told me... Oh, your brake pads are worn. Caused your master cylinder to use more brake fluid, in turn causing your light to go on. Then I got new pads and a guarantee. I should complain to that repair shop, but I wanted to congratulate you instead. Thank you. Dave Buchanan. This is a taste you can't resist. I say put a can in every hand. Do the Pringles twist like this. Pop a top well, keep it fresh. Slip it in. Grab a stack of your favorite snack. Let the fun begin. There's no stopping once you're caught. Hey, wake up. Don't get caught holding that bag. Hey, that's no party. Greasy pieces are a drag. There's no stopping once you're caught. Once you're caught. It was the week after Christmas when all through the house another TV was silent, no sign of a spouse. Swifty car rental bowl week had begun. There were whistles to blow, yellow flags to be flung. Now lions, now falcons, now tigers and rams. On pirates, on wildcats, red raiders and calves. For the best college bowl game, it's easy, my friend. The week after Christmas on ESPN. Swifty car rental bowl week. Coverage begins December 27th on ESPN. Well, we're headed for overtime, and the toss of the coin about to occur, and as soon as they do, we'll go over the, the tie-break rules for you. Ron, if you're a coach now, you want the second possession. You want to lose this, you want to lose the coin flip. So that's not a factor in no. the situation with the kickers. Just a minute. University of Toledo won the toss, elected to go on defense. University of Nevada will go on offense at the 25 yard line. Officers, the clock. It's a good move by Gary Pinko. Won the toss, played defense. He's going to have the ball second. Now you get into your red zone offense, Ron. You're inside the 25 yard line offense. So it goes to the 25 yard line. And as Mike said, from there it, it becomes very simple. You, you want to put it in the end zone for a score because if, if you get stopped, all that other team's got to do is get it. They could even line up and kick a field goal with the line of scrimmage 25 30. That's a 42 yard attempt. What? And let's go down and check with Mike Mayock for a little bit more on uh, on this rule. Mike. Hey Ron although it's new to Division 1A let's not forget that all the lower divisions have been playing the overtime rule since 1981. Division 1 double A etc. Remember Chris Hall is five and three in overtime games so the advantage in strategy may go to him. Okay, we're about to find out because the ball is at the 25 yard line. Nevada will have it first. Play action. Pass is caught at the five yard line. Cornell West makes the catch and steps out of bounds. Now, do you bring in the short yardage offense? Eric Bennett. Now, let's see if they bring in the backup quarterback now to run the short yardage offense. Good rollout pass on first down. Cornell West is going to run a deep comeback. A nice block by Bob Cooper. There's the route. The good catch by Cornell. And here comes Eric Bennett. We've talked about it all this evening, Ron, how well he can run the football. Last time they had the short yardage defense, or short yardage offense, they threw. I think they'll come back and run this first play here. 
assist and goal from the five. He just throws this one away as he goes down hard off a, a rush of Steve Haynes. Both times, the last two times, they've had their short yardage offense in there. They've decided to throw the ball on first down, which puts them in a second and five situation. Mike, for a passing offense like Nevada to give them a first down at the 25, they're licking their chops. I still think they'll try to pound it in here with a run, one run play to see what they can get. the line of scrimmage that's Haynes down at the bottom and now it is third down now you've got to think rollout some type of rollout with Eric Bennett to get outside run pass type option now if you don't make it here you're kicking a field goal Eric Bennett comes off to the sideline to get the play they're going to bring Mike Maxwell in and probably open it up now, Ron. I think that's a real good move by Chris Hall. Brings his short yardage offense off. Now he's going to try to spread him out, maybe catch him in a goal line defense here and get a mismatch. Blitz straight up the middle. They pick it up. Pass is tipped and knocked away by Heron at the last second. A great block by Ken Miner. Now you got to settle for the field goal. Good defensive uh, play by Tom Amstutz, Toledo defense, giving him the ball on the five-yard line and holding him out, Ron. Boy, was Wilkins open on the play, and I mean, Heron goes parallel to the ground, so let's take a look at a 22-yard attempt. This is McHenry holding, Shea to kick. got it. Now, we get an opportunity for Toledo after this break. We'll be right back. Sports fans, it's time. Check out the NFL Team Shop on QVC. Monday nights at 8. We've got your favorite stuff from your favorite teams. The NFL Team Shop. It's hot stuff. Get the Montgomery Ward for $500 million in price cuts. At Electric Avenue, it's all on sale with great gift ideas like a 19-inch TV or a VCR with Universal Remote for only $149. Get a 25-inch TV or a Hi-Fi VCR with VCR Plus for just $219. Home Audio's on sale, like this Sony Mini Shelf System for only $242. Plus, get zero interest for a full year on Electronics $299 and up. And get free delivery on all appliances $349 and up. The $500 million price cuts this holiday season at Electric Avenue, Montgomery Ward. So 37-34, Nevada leads, and now with the rule, Mike Godfrey, Toledo gets the ball at the 25-yard line. If they score a touchdown, this game is over. That's, that's a possession each. That's why you like to be the second team on offense. That's why they chose to go on defense first, because now you can go for the touchdown, and you know if you kick the field goal, you're going to force it into a second overtime, but you can play a little looser now on offense. But understand one thing. If Nevada forces a turnover or anything to end this drive, this game is history, and Nevada would win. Draw play, tape, blocker in front, inside the 20, and he's down to the 18-yard line as Canada finally got to it. Go back again to the first game that these two teams played, the fourth week of the season, the offensive line of Toledo felt like they wore down the defensive line of Nevada and controlled the game at the end of the game. We'll see if they can take over in this overtime. Pete Stone comes out over the football. It is a second down and the line to make is this 16 yard line. Straight ahead with the fullback, Ingle. Lorizano puts the stop on him, but that is a first down. Good running team in Toledo versus against the good passing team in Nevada. Nevada got to the five yard line, couldn't punch it in on short yardage offense. Oh, 
First down. Tate gets one block, turns the corner at the five, and he's inside the five. Lorizano saved a touchdown, and Engel with a paving block outside. This was really pretty well played by the Nevada defense. Eric Ingo, you're right with a nice block right there. Now, I'll tell you what, Sean Tate has proven to you tonight that uh, he's one of the better backs in the country. You can see that Toledo sideline, and they want to maintain a finish in the top 25 this year. And they also want to be one of what will wind up being one of two teams undefeated at the end of the season because someone will fall in the Fiesta Bowl. So the ball is down at the two yard line. It is a first down for Toledo. If they score the touchdown here, overtime is over and Toledo would win. Right side, touchdown, and the Rockets have finished this 1995 season undefeated. line Ron just comes off the ball and you can give credit to this fine offensive line Eric Ingles blocked Rashawn Tate in the end zone for the touchdown in the undefeated season and the celebration begins so we have seen a first here tonight overtime at the end of regulation they were tied but Toledo gets the win 40 to 37. Remember Sports Center comes your way next for Mike Gottfried, Mike Mayock and our entire ESPN crew Ron Franklin saying so long from Las Vegas Nevada where Toledo has won it 40 to 37. Stay tuned for Sports Center coming up next. Coming up next on SportsCenter, Michael Jordan's Bulls hold the NBA trump card, and they shoot for eight straight. Brian Stiff and the Nuggets bet against the house, and the house wins. The Indians pull out an ace, and they get blackjack, while these guys pull their cards off the table. The Minister of Defense is not ready to fold his cards yet. Could he return this season? When the cards are turned over, who found a ticket to the Pro Bowl? Mike Tyson puts his chips on the table, getting ready for Saturday night. Nevada and Toledo, a rematch, and the stakes are raised this time around. And Boston calls the bluff of the team with the league's best record, Florida. Our dealer, he knows all the tricks of the trade. In fact, he knows everything. He knows that SportsCenter's next. <laughs> 